Facebook if you can see it. Hello James, you got somebody on YouTube. Yes. Thank you for joining us on this evening. I already see some people that was already with us on the other broadcast. So thank you so much for tuning back in with us on this evening. We appreciate you on um, those that are with us on Facebook and then those that are, that are with us on YouTube. So um, if this is your first time joining with us, my name is India Bass and uh, I am the uh, leader and uh, founder for Out From Among the Ministries, and that's who's putting on the broadcast this evening. And so you are joining with us for the real serious matter. That's what we're going to deal with tonight. So I have five beautiful sisters in the Lord who all denounce Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. That is what we're going to talk about this evening. For those that... Um, you know, obviously we have people that join us that don't really understand like, you know, these these particular organizations. So Alpha Kappa Alpha is one of the nine black Greek letter organizations. Um, you'll hear the term BGLOs. So that's the one we're going to address. If you've missed it, we also did two other broadcasts. So on last week, on last Thursday, we did the moment of truth. That's where it was 12 of us who came out of these organizations, various ones. We had a fantastic broadcast. Um, and then this past Wednesday on January 13th, we did a, a, another broadcast called The Elephant in the Room. And that's where we dealt with coming out and discussing about coming out of the sorority Delta Sigma Theta sorority. So please, if you missed those broadcasts, you can go back and watch them on YouTube. Uh, they're there. Um, Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, I am just going to be the host this evening. Um, again, I personally came out of Delta Sigma Theta. So I'm going to let these ladies like take it this evening, deliver the word of God and the truth. Um, I'm going to be asking the questions. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to get some questions answered um, from the comments, maybe a little bit later. So uh, just stay with us, rock with us for this evening. Thank you again. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. We want to be cognizant of everyone's time. So hello, Charnette. Hey, Erica. Love you guys. Thank you for joining in. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and kick it off. So please go ahead and introduce yourself. Give your name, uh, how long you were in Alpha Kappa Alpha. You can give the year you joined and, and obviously the year you, you denounced. Whoever wants to start, go right ahead. I guess I go first. Good evening and God bless everyone. I'm Erica Harris and I was in this sorority for 21 years, unfortunately. But again, I, I'm glad God woke me up. So I was in there for 21 years. I denounced in um, April of 2019, I mean, not 2017, yeah, 2017. Hello, everyone. My name is Evelyn Asagimit. I joined Alpha Kappa Alpha in fall of 
fall 2015 and I denounced fall 2016. So I was in it for about a year. Hello everyone, my name is Amber Burnett. Um, I was initiated into Alpha Kappa Alpha in 2010 and I denounced in 2020, so 10 years. Hello everyone, my name is Keisha Holder. Um, I crossed back in fall 17 and I actually denounced in April, April of 2020, so about two and a half years. Hello everyone, my name is Kalia Gilbert and I was initiated in fall of 2015 and denounced in fall of 2018, which would be three years. Thank you ladies. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about why Alpha Kappa Alpha. Why did you choose to join this particular sorority? And you know, include in there if you were a legacy member, you know, those kind of things. You could talk about the positive aspect, but then what was that root also that you think kind of drew you to, you know, being in Alpha Kappa Alpha? Yeah, so I'll go ahead. Um, what kind of had me interested? Um, I was not a legacy. I didn't know anything about Greek life until I actually went to uh, undergrad and I saw all these people you know, of course, during the new student orientation, um, they introduced themselves and I did my research and I decided, OK, I'm definitely going to do something D9. I decided that, you know, I can serve uh, people in many different ways, but how great it is to serve people in a body that has a similar vision, um, kind of like body of Christ. But um I, when I did my research, I said, why would I pick anything else? Why, why wouldn't I pick the very first ones to do this? And I looked at some of the um, uh, values and I felt like it mirrored my values being a service to all mankind and not just uh, certain people. Um, there was so much into my reasoning, um, but that was the main thing. Well, I guess I can go next. Um, so my experience was well, the, I'm not I wasn't legacy. So um, what really made me join was really just growing up and seeing members who are part of the sorority, um, what they were doing in the community and just, you know, how they presented themselves. Um, I was like, you know, I always like, OK, I want to be a part of that sorority. Um, so then when I finally went to college, um, just seeing how they were kind of um, just moving and going about on campus, just going to their events, they kind of like just sold it. So it's like even before then, I just it was really just seeing people like teachers and all of those like wonderful people who were a part of the sorority. And I kind of just wanted to be a part of it. So that was just about it for me. Okay, so like with my situation, I um, also am not legacy. Um, I had role models as well who were members of AKA, one in particular that I looked up to. I think she was like the person that made me say like, wow, okay, this is what I wanna do. And um, like, I, like I just thought the word, world of her, I thought she was beautiful. I thought she was intelligent, eloquent, all of those things. And so I was like, I wanna be like that. And then when I seen Greek life in front of me, I thought it was like the coolest thing ever. I thought it was just super dope. I was like, look at these people. They're having a good time. They're doing great things. They're going to the nursing homes and doing community service. Like, I just thought it was the dopest thing ever. So I was like, yeah, I this is what I want to do. And I know which one I want to be a part of. Um, for me, I also, similar to what some of the ladies are saying, I didn't know anything about Greek organizations prior to getting to college. I just applied to some of the scholarships as a high school senior, but once I got to school and saw how their impact and specifically with this sorority, I I liked the way that 
they the people I saw on campus and in the community were carrying themselves. I also had role models that were um, and like church members that were in the sorority at the time. So it seemed like the way to go. And another thing, it was I m mainly how they carried themselves and what they were doing in the community and wanted to be like the role models. Yes, I'm last, but not least. Um, <laughs> my story is actually not like any of these because I was actually a sophomore in college and there was an interest group on campus because there was not any black sororities on this campus. And it just, it just so happened, it just so happened, these group of ladies approached me and said, hey, you wanna join our interest group? And I was like, sure. And it was an interest group for Alpha Kappa Alpha to become a charter chapter at that campus. So I really didn't have any inkling, no idea about black sororities, except for the movies like you know School Days. And I had no, like I didn't have mentors. I didn't grow up, I come from a small country town. So I didn't grow up mentoring or seeing people or you know, looking forward to that. I just happened to get in it because I was part of an interest group. But once I got through the process, of course, I got sold on it too. Cause I'm seeing all these beautiful women. I'm thinking I've got lots of friends now all over the world. And of course they sell you the things like wherever I go, yes. When I wore my pink and green, I would find some people and we could talk. So what interested me was just once I got in, it was like, okay, I think this is a group I can be of. God was nowhere in the picture at that time. I can tell you that. <laughs> So that's a good point you're bringing up, Erica. So like with your desire with wanting to be an AKA, were you considered, did you consider yourself like a believer at that time? Did you consider yourself as following Jesus as a Christian? You know, all that. Let, let's talk about that a little bit. You know, um, when you went into AKA, when you were in there, were you the ones that was in AKA and, and in the church? You know, that kind of thing. Well, for me, I was apostate. I can already say that. I mean, I believed in God, but at that time I had bought that lie that all roads lead to heaven, you know? And so, yeah, I believed there was a God, but I didn't pay attention to what I was saying when I was going through the rituals. I was not really walking with God at that time. So that was my, that's where I was at that time for me. I wasn't really walking with God at all. Um, For me, I kind of grew up going to church, you know, Ten Commandments, all of that mess, watching my mom fall out at church, filled with the Holy Ghost, all of that stuff. So when I was trying to pursue AKA, I, I thought, mm, I thought many things. I definitely thought myself as a believer. Um, I even fasted in order, you know, that mentality of if you fast, you get what you want. So I even fasted. I had dreams that um, I I made it and dreams that I didn't make it. Um, so I definitely thought myself to be, you know, a Christian. And then, but I wasn't really, really surrendered to Christ. I just went through the motions. I just went to church on Sundays or um, I tried not to curse or I tried not to have sex. I was kind of like that religious type person, not really having a relationship with the Lord intimately. So when going for it, there was no, you know, oh, Lord, you know, what do you think about this? What are you saying about this? It was, Lord, I want this. I'm a fast. I'm going to get it. Um, I had the grades and all of those things. Um, one thing is, though, um, when I was doing research, because I'm I'm like the type A, I will do the research before I even step foot and agree and do anything. I found um, like the rituals online. I remember it was really hot at the time on Instagram where somebody was like, oh my gosh, somebody exposed all the rituals for all the D9s. And I, as I was reading through it, I actually got convicted, but I was like, nah, it's fake, it's fake. Um, but then, you know, later on, I know we'll talk about that. I found out that it was real, but no, I was not truly walking with the Lord at the time or so I thought I was. That was good, thank you, Evan. I'm kind of where um, Eve, I was the same way, you know, just, you know, growing up in, you know, in church, um, but not really having that, that, that intimate relationship with Christ. So I can say like around that time, I, I will consider myself like a casual Christian. Like I was like one foot in, one foot out. So I was still kind of doing what I wanted to do. So um, 
that's how it was. So it's just like the relationship wasn't, it wasn't what nearly where it is now. So it's just like, I wasn't really aware of the things that, that wasn't of him because I was still in the world. So I was, I wasn't like, I couldn't just be being faced right there with it. I couldn't just point it out and say, okay, well, this is not of God. Even when some things that kind of made you feel like a bit off, you still kind of went along with it because, you know, you never know where, you know, you didn't really just know where it was coming from then. But as you look back at it now, you can see, okay, well, hey, and now I see what that was. So, yeah, that's kind of it for me. For me, I, I would say the exact same thing. And Evelyn, I've actually talked to you before. And whew, literally, I grew up in church, grew up on the praise team, grew up on the dance team, doing double in the church, was staying, staying on Saturday mornings all the way to the afternoon. When I got to college, for whatever reason, that, that did not equate to me having a relationship with Christ like, like he wants us to in the word. We, we, I kind of had a traditional relationship that I was taught to have, but it, for, it, it didn't stop me from doing what I wanted to do and, and do it, having a plan that didn't involve his discernment. So yes, I was a Christian in my mind, but if, you know, on, on heaven's standards, you know, what was I, I, I was doing I was in church and I was everywhere else. So, yeah, that's what I can say about that. So basically my story is like exactly the same. I mean, I grew up like everybody who knows me knows I always say I grew up apostolic Pentecostal, like very, very serious, like about church. Like my parents took it very seriously, like the relationships with Christ and our walk with Christ and me, because like I tried not to do anything wrong. I felt like I was I, I felt like I was living like a Christian should. I honestly believed at one point that. God answering my prayers was a measure of my salvation when it's not. God answers prayers because he's good, not because you're good. And so I literally just kind of, and again, like I was young, I started college at 17. So I, it took for me to be an adult, to realize that I can't filter my relationship with God through my parents anymore. I have to go out for myself and see what it is that God wants me to do. And so when I was young, when I would pray, I didn't come into his presence with thanksgiving. I said, dear heavenly father, look, this is what I need. And all of my prayers were, I need this, I need this, I need this, I need this. And so in my mind, I was like, yeah, I pray all the time and I do this, but they, they were selfish prayers. They weren't ever just me saying, Lord, I love you. Let me worship you. And that's how you truly begin to build a relationship with God and truly begin to develop that relationship. And honestly, I'll just say like as 17, 18 years old, I was just naive. Like, Everyone else said, like, you believe that you were a Christian, but you didn't realize exactly how far away you actually were. I think we're going to be the bobbleheads tonight, right? <laughs> we're just going to be agreeing and like we, we, we all mute everybody so that we don't interject with, with people talking. So we just back here like, yes, and amen. And let the church say amen. <laughs> All right. Did we miss anybody? Did anybody else not chime in? I don't want I'm going to make sure I don't miss anyone. All right. Okay. So let's start getting into, we, we, so let me say, so I didn't, I didn't mention this at the beginning. So Amber came up with the name of this broadcast. So praise the Lord for that. So Amber, can you explain why we did the real serious matter? Okay, so um, when India and I were talking, um, she was basically saying that like they had chose the elephant in the room for the Delta broadcast because um, the elephant is one of Delta's unofficial symbols. And then I thought like, what is like a play on words like for something like this that's super serious? And I was like, wait, AKs always use the phrase serious matter. Like it's a serious matter, but our souls, is what is the real serious matter. Nothing else matters, like seriously, nothing else really matters. Like our souls is what is the serious matter, so. Yeah. Come on with it. Come on, Amber. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. So let's go further 
into why this is the real serious matter. Let's let's talk about the rituals, the initiation. Let's let's get into that, y'all. Let's let's uh it's like we did on the other broadcast. So please everyone chime in with you know some aspect of the rituals that definitely are contradictory to the word of God, that's blasphemous to the word of God. And you know, you've come to realize like, oh my gosh, like I can't believe I said this, I did this, you know. So share that with everyone. Oh my gosh. Okay, look, y'all. Yeah, I know I told y'all I did the research and I thought it was fake. And then I got into that room and I'll say one thing because I could probably go on all day about this. Um, but you know, I was the six at the time, of course. Um, and uh one of the things we had to do was take turns kneeling on a pillow and um putting our right hand up. And basically just repeating after the basilis or what you call the the president at the time. There's another ritual name for it, but I forgot. Um, and we had to repeat after her. And one of the things that we talked about was um, really, I don't know word for word, but really giving our hearts to Alpha Kappa Alpha forever, like for life. That's it. And, you know, I know some chapters would sign their name in blood, but I had to sign my name. And, um, but I, I didn't sign my name in blood, y'all. I didn't do that. I just know some other chapters did that. We wait, what? Well, let's go back to that. Say, what? No, <laughs> wait, I know, what? I know that some other chapters would sign their name in blood, but I didn't have to do that. But that's technically what it was. We just used regular pens and we had to write down our name in this book um basically pretty much sealing the deal making that agreement making that covenant to say yes i agree um and the lord really highlighted that to me about really letting your yes be your yes and your no be your no anything further than that's from the evil one um and he was pretty much when i came to that point he highlighted these rituals and said you've yoked yourself to something else that's not me so i can't have all of you um but that was one of the things. Y'all, everybody like, we still on the blood part because we like, what? I I know you didn't do that, you know, Evelyn. It's just like, this is just the reality of what we talking about here. Like when we, when we, when we're public and bold and about, you know, this is not of God, like Evelyn, like, you know, thank you for sharing that, that that does go on, you know, appreciate it. Go ahead. I wanted to like kind of piggyback off of that. Um, the altar really was an issue for me. And I didn't realize that it was an altar. I was at like um, initiation or something. And I've been to several initiations. And I was at initiation and I heard a member say, let's move the altar over here. And my mind was like, what? I, I, like, I literally just thought it was a table. And so when I heard that, my mind was like, what? And like, I instantly started feeling that conviction that I was already kind of had been feeling. And then I tried to reason with myself and just say, well, I mean, that doesn't mean that it's worship. And then I literally like said, okay, Amber, when else is there an altar present? Worship in secret societies. That's it. Like no time, no other time. And so like the kneeling, like I said, well, you know, I didn't actually physically bend over and bow, but like when you kneel to show submission, you're literally telling this entity, whatever it is, like I'm submitting myself to you. And at the end of the day, we don't really know exactly what it is that we're submitting ourselves to. We're just agreeing to a whole bunch of vows and oaths in front of like this candle that's used to represent a dead person. Like at the end of the day, that's almost like a seance in a sense. Like when I started putting all of this stuff together in my head, I was like, you know, I can't stand before God and make an excuse for any of this. None of it checks out. It just doesn't. Like the more I read the Bible, the more I'm trying to get closer to God, I can't rationalize any of it. I just can't. The only thing I could possibly say is it didn't mean anything. Well, if it doesn't mean anything, why are you still there? So. Yeah. And when you talk about the actual practicing of the rituals, if you took Alpha Kappa Alpha Alpha or any Greek or you just take the name off and compare it to a witch's ceremony, you couldn't tell the difference. Because the qualities of this is it's dark, 
I remember it being dark and they talk about you have to form in specific patterns. And if you read the ritual, it reads just like a witch's spell where you have to repeat and then repeat something else. And so just the whole seance, it is a seance because you're, you know, you're making your oaths to the entity is Alpha Kappa Alpha. When you have words in the ritual that talk about, we're going to talk about for the next question, but just talking about to thee and to to this, it's a, it's an entity. It's not just a name. It's something else. And it talks about the spirit throughout the ritual, the spirit of AKA. Who is this spirit? What is this spirit? And so just the whole, but the whole process of the candles, of the, 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 the sayings and the oaths you have to repeat back and forth, the setting, like she said, the altar, where you are having to bind yourself and you're linking up with the other ladies. Again, go watch a witch's ceremony. No difference. Literally, I just, like you said, I remember the room being dark. The only light was a candle at the table representing um, what Amber just said. And it was the altar. It, we were facing the altar. We were lining up at at the altar in in a line and chanting until the last person received lit their candle and literally it was so many of us in that room like it, we it's like we were chanting this thing over and over and over because it had to, we had to wait until the last person finished all the way at the back and i don't and this is, i don't completely remember what we were waiting for each person to finish but i don't know but I remember that was when I was being initiated, when I was in the process of, of being in leadership, helping to initiate other people. I remember standing behind the altar with the black robe on, looking at them and saying, repeat after me and looking everybody in the eye. And I was thinking to myself, like, what am I doing? And it's like I was given I, I remember something being different about me that day where i was i had to look at them and, and see if they were serious enough i was like like the look i was giving them was like you better mean it and the change that happened in me while i was doing something else to someone doing that to someone else that that was different that was a different spirit we even as she said as erica said we addressed a spirit throughout the rituals we address and i remember at that time because i was in I was in possession of the ritual book and we were addressing an eternal spirit. Who, who is that? Who, what was that? You know, the entire thing. If I, if any, if, if other people who had never seen it before could be a fly on the wall, they would say, this is demonic. This is dark. These are witches. That's what they would say. And, Real quick to add, I just want to read something from there um, because uh, Khalid, you touched on how we had to keep singing it at the end of every meeting. We had to keep sealing the deal over and over and over again. And just, you know, that was a form of worship. Um, so here's an example of the eternal spirit. So um, from the ritual book. So eternal spirit, we yearn for a better understanding of spiritual things and a closer walk with thee. I'm going to read it one more time. Eternal spirit, we yearn for a better understanding and of spiritual things and a closer walk with thee, that we may interpret aright the times in which we live. We long to be able to minister according to thy will to people who are troubled and burdened with the cares of the world. And it's like when you read it and you have new eyes in the Lord, you, doesn't that sound crazy? But Absolutely. we did these things because we were very blind. But that's an example of like really praying to the eternal spirit, thy. Who, who was that? It wasn't God. It wasn't Jesus. And I kind of want to just kind of piggyback off of Amber and Miss Erica. Um, like when we were like when you all were speaking about the candle. So we know like in the front of the room, it's that candle, that representation of Ethel. And like when we were in the circle, like, you know, we had our own little candle and we were we were like the first person lit the candle from Ethel. 
and kind of lit it to everyone else. And as we as we lit each other's candle, we were saying, I think it's pass on a torch, pass, pass on the flame. Remember from where the glory came. So it's like as we we're lighting the candle where we're saying that every time we light the candle till we got to the end. And then if you look further into the ritual book, you were you will see where it says like the glory isn't mine. The glory isn't yours. Basically, the glory is for the founders. And it's like that's that's a whole contradiction to the word of God, because God is to get the glory, the honor and the praises. But we were praising the founders for this, you know, and that 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 totally goes against the word of God. Even when it comes to just signing our name in the book, you know, in the beginning of the ritual, in the rituals, it tells us it's, this is spiritual. So everything that we're doing is spiritual. So we have to look at it from a spiritual standpoint and to realize, well, hey, me signing my name in that book, it was spiritual. Like, why do I have to sign my name? Why do I have to kneel? And, you know, a lot of people like including myself, we did these things and we didn't even ask, why do we have to do it? We just do them. And it's like it's. It's something to everything. It's a reason for everything. Like you're not just doing it just to do it, you know? So we don't really, we're not really thinking of that at that moment. Like we're just looking at it from the physical standing, physical standpoint, not really understanding what's happening in the spirit as we doing this. So it's really like Satan has deceived us and he deceived so many people into doing it. Like people really just doing these things and thinking it's just nothing, but it's really something to everything that we did in that room. Amen. I don't know, and um, we can go right into the scriptures. I mean, to the real quick. I, I realized that we were low key participating in necromancy. You know, mm -hmm. worshiping these dead founders, saying mm -hmm. they name every day, lighting candles for them, praying to them. That, yeah, and the Bible and definitely cool. makes it clear not to do that. And I don't want to inter interject, but someone is saying like, "Who is Ethel? Ethel is one of the founders for Alpha Kappa Alpha." And I don't know if she's asking that. Cause she legitimately doesn't know, or she might've been asking, like saying like, who is Ethel? Like, why are you doing that for her? I, I'm not sure which way she meant it, but I just wanted to say that for anybody that didn't know. Also, I wanted to um, mention like, since you brought up Ethel, like a lot of AKs refer to her as the guiding light <laughs> and Jesus is the truth, the way, the life, the light of the world, that's him. So yeah. So uh, I want to, as we go, Erica, were you were you about to chime in on something to say okay, something? Okay, we're going to go to the next question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give me a, so I want to, um, as as um, we segue into the next thing, yeah, uh, Brother Joseph, like definitely ancestor worship repackaged. That's the truth, and I can even say that for deltas because it literally says that in the ritual about the ancestors and all that kind of other stuff, and that really is part of that. But um, Keisha, you said something very key on mentioning the book and having to sign a name in this pledge book, right? We had to do the same thing as Delta. And Satan is, you know, anti-Christ, right? He mimics everything, but it's anti-Christ. And we know there's the book of life. That's where our name is supposed to be. But you got this book over here that you signed your name into. So as we talk about this book, let's get to these rituals in these ritual books. And, um, and let's talk about some of these things that's in the rituals that are said that people, unfortunately, um, people agree to, you know, that kind of thing. So let's let's talk about that. Again, I'm like ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, again, whoever comes across this, you be the judge. You say you are a Christian and you're a believer in Christ. You be the judge of these words and see if it lines with the word of God. We mentioned that the last talk about light. This is from their ritual book. And we have the permission because we're not trying to make money off of this. This is one part. Alpha, they're talking about Alpha Kappa Alpha, came as the first light into the dark world of Negro women and will bring the light, which is the symbol of the three words that make up the name of Alpha Kappa Alpha. So basically saying Alpha Kappa Alpha is the light in the dark. And what does the word of God say is the light? Who is the light? Again, go do your scriptures. I mean, you can look it up. So that's one. Another part of the scripture that we will say 
I sincerely, and I don't want to start tearing up because I keep, <laughs> I can't believe I said this. I sincerely dedicate my time and my talent to the growth and development of Alpha Kappa Alpha. As a Christian, what are we supposed to be doing our work and our time and our talents for? And then this is just one lyric from one of the songs you have to sing during the ritual. It says, I think that I shall never know another love that thrills me so. And again, they're saying that there's no other love. Again, I, I mean, that's so we're singing this song. And then this last script, this last one piece from this from the rituals. At this time, we vow because we have been revealed to the deepest mysteries and the secrets and the symbols of our sorority that we will never reveal them. And we promise to keep them for the rest of our lives. So Alpha Kappa Alpha is the light of the world. And then you have to say this pledge actually at the ritual. And then after you become crossover, whatever, get initiated, you have to say this at every meeting and God forgive me. I'm just Lord. I'm not, I'm just saying this. I don't believe this anymore, but this is what you would have to say. And this is what people still say today to thee. Oh, Alpha Kappa Alpha. I pledge my heart, my mind, my strength to foster thy teachings and to obey thy laws and to make thee supreme in service to all mankind. Oh, Alpha Kappa Alpha, we greet thee. You be the judge if you think God is okay with you pledging your heart, mind, soul, and strength to an organization that you're gonna obey its laws. Whose laws are we supposed to be promoting and obeying? Again, people, we perish for lack of knowledge. If you are a believer in the Lord God, when you hear these words that people say, they kneel down on a pillow, they vow to do these things, they vow to recognize Alpha Kappa Alpha. And that's just a few of the few of them. The whole ritual book, people, if they have it and they can pick out some more that basically say, now that you have found Alpha Kappa Alpha, you are now a new person. And it's because of AKA not because of God and the what's really diabolical because they do throw scriptures in there. But the God they're talking about is not the God of heaven, not the great creator. Understand that. But they do throw that and throw that in there to try to trip people up. Oh, there's there's Jesus in the script, in the ritual. Foolishness. (laughs) But again, again, like I said, look at that scripture. Who's the light of the world? Who are we supposed to be doing our talents for? And are we supposed to be keeping any secrets? You answer those questions. Whoever wants to chime in next, go ahead. I feel like she really did a good job of like basically breaking it down. I was gonna say the same thing. Like I got to a point where I was like, I wouldn't say the pledge anymore because it's literally they took scripture and they took out the Lord or God and put a gay. And I'm just like, I can't do that. That's literally slapping God in his face. Like, I'm not worried about you right now. I'm worried about a gay. And I was just like, I'm not going to say the pledge anymore. So that was that right there really was just for me, a deal breaker. But the other stuff that you have been reading, like I didn't remember, like, I, like when you read it, I'm like, eh, that kind of sound familiar, but it's not something that I remembered every single day, but hearing it makes me cringe. I'm like, that's just, it's appalling. And like it, like every time I go through like thinking about this stuff, I always go back to repenting because I'm like, man, am I really forgiven? Like, cause it, it takes you deep. It takes you deep. And to hear that it's like similar to like a witch ceremony, like no, per- and that's like the whole deception about it. Cause no person is going to willingly, at least no one I know, no believer, I should say, is going to willingly just say like, oh yeah, I'm about to do a witch's ceremony and um, basically betray God. Let's go. They're not going to do that. They're going to wrap it up in 
fostered friendships and community service and all this great thing. They're going to put this pretty bow on it and tell you, um, you know, it's not that serious. But we all know that the devil is he's he's very, very slick. Like he never comes looking like the devil. He comes looking like your best friend. He comes looking like a great opportunity. That's how he comes to you looking. So you have to use discernment and you have to have a relationship with God in order to stop him when he comes. Because if you don't have that, and at the time, like I said, I didn't, I thought I was a Christian. If you don't have that, then you're going to fall into these traps. But once you know, you know. And so... Yeah. And I kind of want to just kind of speak on um, like some of what Miss Erica was saying about how basically see what some of the things like when we look at the ritual in certain parts, it's kind of like saying that you don't need God for these things. So it's like once you become a member of this sorority. Like AKA can provide all of these things. AKA can open your eyes with AKA. You can, you know, you can have this, you can have opportunities. Like they can, like they, they make it seem like they are the light. And when you come into that light, that's when all the things are open up to you and all of that. So it's like, it's kind of like, you don't even need God. And it's like, like in, even in, you know, the ritual, you see where they take certain scriptures and they take out what the word of God says and they replace place it with AKA. Um, like even in this part, like in this ritual here, it was saying like AKA, you know, it like it's, AKA, it says AKA Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority will continue to be a channel through which individuals may find together what they cannot find separately or independently. Security, a sense of responsibility, the respond of the response of friends and opportunities for experiences and mutual rewarding services. So it's just like, you, you're saying so without being a part of this sorority, I can't have this. So it's just like, you know, it's kind of depending on this sorority and not very so much of God, you know, and we know that we have we have to depend on God for each and everything. So we can't put all of that into this sorority. And then like when you go down, like about the prayers, um, even when the prayers you we see like. You know, I kind of discussed that about how, how it's unholy. You know, we see Jesus in it and then immediately we like, OK, well, we OK, because they mentioned Jesus. But we're not really understanding what's being said after they mentioned Jesus. So it's just like if you're not aware, if you're like if you're not just rooted and know what the word of God says, you can like a word can just it can really make a difference through the whole thing. And that's kind of what that prayer is like. It's like that made the difference because. They manipulated it. And we already know what the word of God says about manipulating scripture. So it's just like you have to understand that you prayed that prayer, even if you didn't mean it, you you spoke it. So it's just like once you understand that your words hold power, like you're going to be held accountable for everything that you say. You have to understand how important speaking these things is. So it's it's a lot. Yeah, um, I kind of wanted to add some like memories um, that I had because it's funny how you mentioned, you know, if you don't know the word of God, you don't really know how um, how heavy it is to say these things. Um, and I know we're going to talk about this a bit later, but after I joined, I actually did um, fully submit to the Lord. And that's when my eyes opened. And I was um, the basilisk at the time. And I, and I had to tell them, I said, I no longer want to keep saying the pledge at the end of every meeting because that goes against Matthew 537. Like, all, like my whole heart, mind and soul belongs to God. And then, um, you know, they was kind of looking at me crazy. But I remember... We had to go to, you know, different regional conferences, Boule and things like that. And we still had to wear our all white pantyhose and keep saying this stuff. And I remember it was the first time I heard the eternal spirit. And I had asked one of um, the older sorrows at the time. I had asked her because she considered herself a chaplain. So I said, can you tell me? I whispered in here. I said, who, who is eternal spirit? I asked her. Um, and she she made a joke. But it wasn't a joke. And she was like, the devil. And I was like. And and then, you know, me not wanting to believe that, I said, is it just another word for God? You know, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, yeah, it's another word for God. But something was just not right. It was just not right. So it's like 
when you're saying these things, it's not just, oh, I just did it at my ritual. That's in the past. I repent about saying it at the ritual and just keep serving. No, you have to keep saying it over and over and over and over and over and over again, consistently renewing that covenant with the spirit that is behind um, the organization. So I wanted to add that. Yeah. Evan, I don't believe that she was joking. You know how God spoke to Babel and was supposed to curse the Israelites, but he could ha, kept have to tell the truth instead. God was telling you the truth right then, who that eternal spirit is. I don't think it was a joke whatsoever. Evelyn, I just have a quick question. Where around where did you come in at? Because the the signing, I know you said you didn't sign your name in blood, but you had said that like some chapters did. And then like the lady saying like the devil, like that's really creeping me out. And I'm just curious, like what, like what, where did you come in at? Amber, was that a question for me? It was kind of breaking up. Yeah, sorry. I was just asking where you had came in at because like every, every time you like talk about like an encounter with like different AKAs, it's just super creepy. So I was just wondering like where you had came in at. Give me one. Again, I'm so sorry. It broke up again. I'm going to pull up um, the, the YouTube link and I'm going to hear you say the question. We can talk about it later. Give me, give me one we can, second. We can talk about it later. It's fine. Oh, are you sure? Because it's, <laughs> yeah. it's coming It was now. just a silly question. You're good. Yeah. And now it's starting to work. I'm sorry. Are you sure you want to ask it one more, one more time? No, I was just asking like where you had came in at because like you keep telling these creepy stories about these AKs that you're running into with the sign of blood and the devil and I'm like, where did you come in at? Like, Roy State University. <laughs> but I just want to say something real quick, um, Evelyn, because you had said the woman was like the devil. Um, but you rem um, you all know, like in the ritual where it speaks about like the highest authority. Um, are you willing to submit yourselves to their highest authority and how it doesn't say God, but you're submitting yourselves over to their highest authority. And it's like if that was God, they would say God, but they're not saying God. They say in their highest authority. So you have to question. You have to ask the questions like who is their high? Who is their highest authority? And, you know, like some people know, like, I feel like some people know that it's wrong, but they still choose to be a part of it. You know, that's Romans chapter one. The light came into the world, but they they rejected it. They prefer the their darkness. That's God a word showing true. So thank you for that, ladies, for chiming in. And I know and everybody, there's way more aspects of, you know, the rituals, things like that. Um, most all these organizations have secret handshakes, have secret passwords, um, you know, those kind of things, which are the same things that happen in Freemasonry um, and other occult groups, you know, where you have all these things that are hidden, you know, and so. It's the same thing with like AKA and Delta that I came out of and, you know, all these other organizations. So um, let's talk about, you know, we talked a little bit of, you know, obviously about the rituals. So let's talk about your initiation process. So let's go through what happened with that. You know, talk about hazing if that happened to you and, I, and whether it be physical or mental, because sometimes some people didn't go through a physical type of hazing, but there's mental manipulation, which manipulation is also a form of witchcraft. So, um, but let's, let's talk about those kind of things. And I understand everybody's experience is different, um, but there are still these kind of things that do happen. So chime in about that. <clears throat> well, I remember from the initiation rituals when we were given a crown and the crown was, was similar to it was it was like a ivy wrapped around um a, like branches kind of like what if you would see a picture of christ you would see the branches um on his head that were like poking his head but it was everything about the initiation at the end you were able to wear white you were able to um put on a crown of ivies and there was like this um, symbol that you were able to receive, this um, pen that you were able to receive. 
that goes it's a hidden it's a hidden pen no one else is supposed to see it but it's supposed to be underneath your jacket or underneath something um closest to your heart right over your heart and it has to be if you're going to wear it you have to wear it over your heart and this specific pen is so special that you need to keep it hidden and you're not supposed to wear it too many places at least that was what it was um conveyed to me and all of that is and oh and that day is the same day that you write your name in that book so just in general it's a it's mockery of wearing your unspotted garment in heaven because christ is coming back for an unspotted uh, unspotted bride without blemish so you can finally wear all white on the last day you get crowned in heaven when, once you receive eternal life with the crown of glory and you also get crowned on the last day of your initiation because you you enter into aka land so that's that's just mimic that's just mocking everything about entering the promised land the true place that you should want to be the real membership that you want everything about that last day that final day is mimicking um what 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 christ created and just you know as i said earlier when i was doing the doing the initiating wearing a black robe i was able to walk around in white while they were only they could walk around in black because they weren't they they were not ready yet they weren't ready to enter into aka land so they had to wear black and i could wear white it it, it was just all together um mockery and just i don't even know the name i could call it but it's really so have, uh, people in the comments say it's demonic there you go that's the word <laughs> i had um something came to my mind when you were saying that like the basilisk or the president wears a black robe and it makes me think of like a judge you know like a judge wears a robe and you know we're gonna stand before god and he's going to judge us for every action, every word that we said. So it's almost like when you're getting initiated, you're standing before this judge and they're gonna judge you and then crown you with the glory of AKA or something. So that literally just came to me as you were talking. Yep. Yeah, and everything about the ceremony is because when you're going through the process, you have to wear black. And then once you go over, you're white. And it's that whole concept of you now come from darkness and now you're into the light, but it's not the light of Christ. It's the light of AKA. You're gone from the dark to the light now. And again, <laughs> Lord help us for our ignorance. Cause that's again, the whole, the whole ceremony is talking about going from dark to light of Alpha. Like you said, of Alpha Kappa Alpha, Alpha Kappa Alpha brought you out of the darkness. You weren't basically worthy before you became an AKA. Now you are everything like she said is a mockery of the gospel of Christ. Anybody else want to chime in? We were talking about not just initiation, if there was hazing and all that. And thank you for that, Erica, because that false light is Lucifer. Remember, Lucifer is considered the light bearer. That's actually what the name means. And in Gnosticism, in Freemasonry, and in the occult, the light that is considered good is actually Satan. And then they consider Yahweh, the true and living God, Elohim to be bad. So the occult considers the opposite. So in all these organizations, that light is actually referring to Satan, to Lucifer. Yeah, I actually wanted to add something else. Um, I forgot about the new name that you get after you cross over. You just become a whole new person overall. You get to wear new clothes. You can finally wear pink and green on campus. You can finally wear pearls. You can finally do all of this stuff that you just couldn't do before. You can approach certain people and have their respect all of a sudden. You can, um, you can just, you have access to stuff now that no one else has access to. And you inwardly get to boast about that and no one else knows it. And so it's like, it's just, I, there was something else I wanted to, there was another point that I wanted to make because I feel like I'm drifting off a little bit, but even the new name, there we go. The new name, the hazing that came with 
getting the new name. And even now, like as you ask the question specifically about hazing, you're told not to talk about it. And it's a big label on it. Like, no, don't do that. No, don't go there. No, don't um, expose because it's a sacred. This is this is secret of your you promise to do this. But I just want to remind myself in this moment and in, in that I am set free from keeping all of that demonic secrets. Mm-hmm. All of that. I just wanted to give myself that reminder because I almost had to I had to say, let let me speak up. I, I need to speak up. I need to be OK with speaking up. I didn't get my new name because I didn't comply. So everybody else was able to get their new name, their new line name. Um, and I wasn't able to get mine until a year after. And that also halted the process of, I don't know if it was exactly a year after, but it was close to it, almost 10 months, 11 months. I don't, I don't remember dates completely, but everybody was upset with me because in order for everybody to order their jackets, Everybody had had their name and I was holding everybody up by not doing what I was supposed to do to get my name yet. So all of that, that, that mental drain that was on me, knowing that everybody was upset with me, knowing that, you know, there was just certain things I I didn't want to do. And I didn't want, I, I, I didn't want to allow people to treat me a certain way. So I was considered not, you know, not real, um, that I wasn't strong enough. And yeah, you must really, you, Everybody considered, yeah, she must have been the paper because she didn't get her name yet. So the other Greeks and what they were looking at me as because I didn't they were knowing that I hadn't had I guess I didn't have my stuff together and I didn't have my jacket. I didn't have my bag or my hoodie. You know, the mental hazing that came from other organizations, as well as the one that you're in where people were supposed to protect you and we were supposed to protect each other's secrets. That was not happening for me. Um, and I was shunned constantly. And yeah, that's that's what I had to say. I had to make sure I got to the, the naming part. The new name is also a mockery of coming into the promised land, getting a new name. Yeah. So speaking of just piggybacking off of you talk about paper, because I was considered paper because when I crossed, it was like one, a.k.a. at the time was in big trouble because an ish initiate had died. So they had put a lockdown. And plus we were going, get initiated through a graduate chapter. So they were like, y'all better not do nothing. But here is the lesson for when you are not truly with God, because our group, we wanted to be hazed because we didn't want to be paper. We didn't want to be considered fake. So we wanted to be, we wanted to be hazed. And now I'm like, if you have not seen the movie, The Burning Sands, watch it. I mean, it does have, you know, some stuff in it. So I want to warn you, however, understand it is real. People are literally almost killing themselves to join something that's not of God. They are committing fornication, doing gang rapes, getting beat down and doing all this stuff to join an organization. And they have the audacity after doing this to get in a circle and say the Lord's prayer. And understand the Bible is clear. And Peter, it says they're going to be worshiping a different Jesus. They're going to have a different spirit and they're going to be following a different gospel. But this is the craziness of this system. We wanted to be hazed. We were actually, when we would go to little conferences and we would secretly say, um, could y'all do something to us? And it's, it's ludicrous. It's foolishness. But like Kalia said, in that system, if they know you are paper, they have t-shirts that says made. And that if you are considered paper, you will get harassed. You will get persecuted because of that wicked mindset that if you don't bleed for the organization, you're not real. And I can't think about what Jesus Christ did for us when he bled. I don't need to bleed. He bled for us, but here we are spilling our blood, getting tattoos, branding ourselves to be a part of this organization. Then turn around and think it's of God, think it's Christian. Like I said, again, I was paper. I'm proud of it. I'm like, but I, at the time, I thought it was a bad thing. Like I wanted to be hazed. That's how foolishness the devil is. Yeah. Um... That's it's really real. I went through some real things 
And at the time, I was like, dang, I wish we got pledged harder. But um, I, you know, when I look back at it, I'm just like, really? It's so crazy because Jesus doesn't ask us to do any of these things to welcome us into his kingdom. But some of the things I had to do, it, it, um, Kalia definitely touched on it a bit, kind of like stripping yourself and um, kind of dying. And um, so that, you know, during the probate, you can kind of reveal this new identity that you now have in the kingdom of darkness um, with the spirit of AKA. But um, so, yeah, during that, you know, initiation, that initiation process, there was definitely mental hazing as well as physical. We had to take out our hair. We uh, had to get off of social media, almost like a fast. We um, could not wear um, certain colors. We had to wear all black a lot, all of the time. We had to meet at night for set. Um, it was a lot of, uh, it, it was tormenting, actually. Like, it was a very tormenting spirit behind all of that. Um, I don't know if people have seen the whole passing the egg thing. That was real, because I had to do it. We had to eat things. It was so disgusting. Um, I, it, it's, it's very real. Um, just physical exhaustion, just different mind games, buying ivy plants, going on little hunts, just a mess. So when people die from these things and they try to cover it up as some trash on the news, understand that it's very, very real. Um, people are so enamored by this because the devil paints it so beautifully and they will do crazy things to just prove to someone or prove to themselves or prove to other people that they are worthy of. It's just, it's a spirit of pride. Um, it's a spirit of rejection. That's just, um, and it, even me, you know, just wanting to, oh yeah, I'm doing this. Cause prior to doing, um, AKA I was in the band. So all we knew was getting haze, band camp, all of that stuff. So when I was coming in, I was like, let's go. You know, I'm trying to be made. Let's do it all. So it was like nothing to me. Um, it's ridiculous. But yeah, those are some of the things I had to go through. And of course, after you cross, you get a new name. Um, you get to wear the color. You get to put the sign up. You get to actually do the call. And y'all, I know this is spiritual because I don't know how I was able to even make that sound come out of my mouth. You know, like the ski we sound, you could do the call, but they never taught us. They never taught us how to do the call. It's like we just naturally were able to just do the sound now. So we were able to do that. We were able to put up our pinkies, wear pink and green. We were able to haze other girls. It was just, it was kind of like that stripping and becoming that new person. And they told us, they told us that, um, yeah, you are no longer Evelyn. You're now Evelyn, the AKA. That's your identity now. That's that's it forever. But praise God, because that's not my name. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't answer somebody to say, why did we choose today for this? Because, I mean, today is technically the sorority's founder's day. This is the day it was established in 1908. So it's to me, apropos. This is the day they found. This is the day we're going to, you know, denounce that founding because it was placed on a wicked foundation. So that's why we chose to do it on this day of all days, because there's many people, actually thousands. That's what's so sad. Thousands of women across the United States, probably around the world, who are celebrating today. I've seen the posts who haven't unfriended me. They got their pink and green and they're proud of the Founders Day and everything else. So, yeah, we're going we're entering the camp, the Satan's um, camp. To stir it up. That's why we're doing it today. Come on, Erica. Yeah. I, I also wanted to like kind of piggyback on that. It's not my founders day anymore. So <laughs> like I don't I don't care. I'm not gonna sit here and say, Oh, let me be respectful to the day that they, that these people decide to come together and create um a, a satanic situation for to bring down black people. No, I like I don't care. It's no longer my founders day. So I I I I it could be today, it could be tomorrow, it could be three weeks from now. If somebody says, listen Amber, do you want to be a part of this ministry to help us save souls? Absolutely. Because when I was in AKA, when they asked me to do this, when they asked me to do that, when they I needed to be here, when I needed to be there, I did it. And so I do not care what day it is. If I'm talking about my testimony that God has brought me out of something, 
that is what I'm going to do. I don't have to respect your Founders Day. Your, mind you, your Founders Day, not mine. So I want to piggyback off you, Amber, because a lot like we look at the world today, like people asking, you know, not saying that, you know, asking is wrong. But some people ask like, you know, why are you doing it on a day? Respect their day. And it's just like the world is so comfortable with these demons and demonic things. It's just like y'all want us to pet these demons. Y'all want us to pacify them. Y'all want us to respect the demons and just party and kiki with them. It's just like, why? I'm not a part of that anymore. And it's just like y'all want us to have so re so much respect for 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 demonic things for like. No, like we're going to do what the word of God says. And we got to save souls because that's what we're here for. And it's just like we're not here to just make y'all feel good because it's truly not about how we feel. It's about the word of God. It's about bringing people into the knowledge of him and remove them from the hands of Satan. So it's not even about that. But pe like people like a lot of people have to remove their feelings from it and realize that it's truly not about how we feel. It's truly not about that. It's about God. Like that's that's the only thing it's about. And people really just have to understand that and like stop petting these demons. You're going to have to stop. Yes. But I'm going to let you go. But then I want to talk about my hazing. Um, yeah, I wanted to add on to that. This is the day that the Lord has made. This day belongs to Jesus. It belongs to him. It belongs to him. It is not he created everything he created this day huh he is so merciful that we can even her huh, he's so merciful that people are out there celebrating and stuff but he's so merciful because he's calling them out and i just wanted to say that um again because we are out of the kingdom of darkness and now we've entered into the kingdom of light it it really doesn't matter anymore we're not we're no longer under the covenant of AKA to do this. We're no longer under that covenant. So we don't abide by the rules and we're not, we're fully in Christ. Um, so yes, we're literally snatching back the territory. Um, the Lord has given us the keys to the kingdom. He's given us authority and power over all rules and all the, so yeah, what Erica said, we shutting it down, but yeah, sorry. But um, I kind of like Khalil, I think I'm pronouncing your name right. Hopefully I am. But if I'm not, then it's good. But um, like kind of like what she was speaking about, like as far as like the haze and just to get back on that, um, like, like as far as like the haze, like we want, even with um, Evelyn, you know, we wasn't able to look pretty. Like take your weave out. Don't have your nails done. Don't wear no makeup. Don't wear no, per no pearls. Don't wear no colors. Don't be on social media. Don't be out in the yard. Don't be out to eat. Don't walk through the grass. Don't do none of that. If I tell you to buy me something, you buy it. If I tell you to do something, you do it. And that's just how it was. Um, you they, they, they laugh and wave at you, speak to you throughout the day. But at nighttime, oh, it was on. It was on. Like, and that's how it was. Like the process, what you, and, and a lot of people, including myself, we're going to do it because we want our letters. We're going to do whatever it takes to get our letters. And it's just like, and that's what, like, whatever. Okay. Like, even, the, even if I, in our spirit, we know, Hey, it's not right. Like we not, we don't supposed to be like, why are we feeling this? You know what I'm saying? We know that this is not right, but we still participated in it. We still went out every night. We still did all of this. You know, they tell us to do something. We're going to do it. You know, we were just doing it. Okay we just do it, get this night over with, the quicker we can get to the end of it, you know, the quicker we can go ahead and get our letters. And that's kind of how it was, you know, we, we just did whatever. And it's just like, even with how they treat it, like they just talk to us. And it's just like, how can you say, you know, you of you, this is of God and you're a follower of Christ when you talk to people the way you do, you know what I'm saying? You have to realize the words that you're speaking the word of God says in Matthew that what we do to the least of them is just like we're doing it unto Christ. So it's just like as we speak to those folks, we we treat them bad. We make them do this. We make them doing it. It's just like you're doing it to God. So it's just like you have to understand your actions of what you're doing. But it, it's real. Like it's real. And don't nobody want to be paper because when you paper, guess what? You're going to be like the outcast. You're going to be like the outcast. So it's just like. 
they gonna be your sister in 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 in, in the public in the public eye. They're gonna be your sister, but there's no real sisterhood because outside of being like in the in the same so it's just like if you're paper, I don't talk to me. You you're not gonna be in on everything, you're gonna only know what you need to know. Like it's nothing. Paper, you're just it's just nothing. Like, and that's how they treated the paper. You know what I'm saying? And you were cat. You're not even a you ain't even my soul, you cat. You know what I'm saying? It's just like there's no true sisterhood. So a lot of people say, okay, well, I thought this was like, where is this? You know, it's, it's you know, y'all have a sisterhood. There's no real sisterhood. It's not. You have cliques, you have groups, you have people that treat the same people this way. I mean, you're going to have that in any group organization or whatever, but it's not how they portray it to be. You know what I'm saying? So it's just not how it is. It's people are treated real bad. Like, even with like Evelyn, she kind of told you some of the things she went through. It's it's worse, you know, even with the paddling and stuff, people get paddles. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of stuff that that like it, it happens. And consider those who went through all this stuff. It's like, you know, but even like afterwards, you know, all the money, five hundred dollars here, two hundred dollars here, thousand dollars here. But everything we would go to do for the sorority. But we won't do that for God's kingdom. We'll put in this work, literally stay up hours and hours and hours all night. Go do this, jump through this for the sorority. But when it comes to God, when it comes to reading, studying his Bible, telling other people about Jesus, kneel. And just like he told, you know, Balthazar, you're, you know, I've, you've been weighed. But what are we doing for God versus the sorority or the fraternity? Although we're doing stuff saying it's for God, but it's really not for God. It's for the fraternity or the sorority. All of everything you do when you feed the homeless, when you go and walk the streets, it is for the sorority. God doesn't get that glory. It's the organization. So I wanted to um, kind of jump in on like the haze and stuff. I talked about it a little bit on um, the moment of truth that was last week. But one thing I really wanted to make really um, a point I really wanted to make for the people who are watching this that didn't see that is um, like the turn the other cheek thing. Um, Jesus said, you know, when in Matthew chapter five, that if someone is to hit you um, in the face, you're supposed to literally turn and say, do you want to hit this cheek as well? Like that's the paraphrase version of what he said in modern times. And so I just think about like being online and allowing myself to be paddled and smacked in the face and whatever the case may be. And I never thought for a second, not once that I ever even imagined trying to fight one of my big sisters back. However, if I go out here in the street, if somebody hit me, I'm not at the place in Christ yet to where I'm going to turn the other cheek. I'm absolutely going to be scrappy. And I'm not saying that as like, oh, yeah, this is a good thing. No, I am I know God is still working on me. I, I understand that. But the fact that I can't turn the other cheek for Christ yet, but I didn't have no issue jumping in full force, allowing people to hit me for AK. And like it's it you cannot say it's not an idol you just can't like these are non debatable facts so amen ladies y'all are bringing the fire tonight okay everybody is just like is appreciating the transparency, the truth, bringing the word of God. And that is what we are charged to do. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get into our next uh, question. So we talked about some, I think you kind of really guys just touched on this already. So about the sorority hymns and things like that. Is there anything else that you guys remember as far as chants? Um, that you sung when you were in AKA, things that were said, um, again, getting back to that point of all these things that we say that are anti-Christ, even though we're claiming some, so many people are professing the Lord, but then they do all these things and say that they're, you know, pastors, quote unquote, prophets, quote unquote, bishops, you know, all these people are in these organizations. Uh, someone brought in the fact that you now have a vice president that's about to be inaugurated. Everybody's looking at this at this woman because she's an AKA. 
And that's their vantage point instead of it being the Lord. And they're looking at people. But we're trying to expose the things that are actually done behind closed doors that most people don't really see. And you find out the God that's really being served. So talk about the chants, the things, oh, those prayers and hymns that are said over and over again. I know you touched a little bit about that, but I really want to talk about some of these chants. I, I can go straight into like the hymn. The, the national hymn is a song of worship, period. Like it just it just is. It is. And like in the second stanza, there's a part that says for thy honor and glory today. And when I first learned the song, like that really didn't sit well with me. Even at 18, it's, it didn't sit well with me. So I would be like, for the, today, like I literally wouldn't say that part because it just did not sit right with me. And then like, as I got more, you know, into like just years in, like I would just sing it just because, okay, this is just a song. But then after I like started trying to work out my relationship with God, like that really just made me feel away. Even to like, I got, um, I got married, like I had my wedding this past summer. And I really didn't want them to serenade me with the hymn because of that. But and I knew I was already struggling with this conviction. But I was like, well, what else are they going to sing? It's going to be AKs from like different places. Well, I thought it was going to be AKs from different places. It wasn't. They was all from Indy um, coming to sing to me. And I didn't want to have us sing like a chapter song and like certain people didn't know. So I was like, everybody know the hymn. So I'm just going to let them serenade me with the hymn. And I feel like, you know, just with the fact that I already felt a way towards it and then I still went along with it, even even still knowing I felt a way, like it just feeds back into like the stronghold that, you know, these organizations have on people. I remember um, somebody was um, giving their testimony one time and they said they tried to like avoid a wedding so they wouldn't have to sing their sorority hymn. And then like, it just so happens, like they had came in late and as they were walking in, they were like, Hey girl, it's time to sing. And like, she went and sang, but she did not want to do it. It's like, it's like a stronghold. It's like, you want to, to be a part. You don't want to upset people. You want these moments. I want it so badly to be sang to at my wedding. Like if nothing else, like I just wanted that so badly. And it's like, I'm real. I'm looking back. Like I just made a vow before God. I went into an actual legitimate covenant with my husband, one that God ordained. And here I am going to bring this AKA stuff and say for thy honor and glory when I just was in a church on a Sunday doing this in front of in, in front of the Lord as a vow in front of the Lord. And now I'm back with the AKA stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'll read because I didn't really remember. Praise God. But I read the pledge that we the, the thing that I was talking about that we had to kept saying over and over and over again at the end of each meeting at every conference um this is what the pledge was called um we would sing a song and then we would say this pledge at the end i can't remember the song but it says um to thee o alpha kappa alpha i just want to throw up saying this um i'm just reading we pledge our hearts our minds our strengths all my bible scholars know what that is to foster their teachings obey thy laws what is AKA teaching and what laws do they have anyways? And make thee supreme in service to all mankind. And this is the part that I hated the most. Oh, Alpha Kappa Alpha, we greet thee. Jesus. It's like when you say, oh, Alpha Kappa Alpha, we greet thee. It's like you just invited something. Like, you know, when you enter the Lord's gates with thanksgiving and praise, you're, you're, you're greeting him. You know, you're saying, Lord, we love you. We welcome you in our hearts. We welcome you in this place. That was kind of like a ceiling, um, like sealing the deal. Like we greet you again. Come on in again. We'll follow you. We'll obey your laws. But that's um, the pledge that had to be repeated over and over again. Sorry, can I jump in real quick? Because I, I meant to say something I forgot. What are the Christian principles that AK is allegedly founded on? Like people love to bring that out. And like the more I think about this stuff and the more I get into it, I'm like, yeah, okay. Y'all say we founded on Christian principles, but I'm sitting here like, what are they? What, what Where are they at? Please show me. Like, what are the Christian principles? I feel like that is a lie that someone said one day and then everybody ran with it for all of their orgs. Because like we don't mention Jesus anywhere. Like. 
There's one time during the initiation we say in Jesus' name after we done prayed to the eternal spirit and the this, that, and the other. Then we say, okay, we're gonna we gonna pray to Jesus now. But other than that, AK don't mention God, Jesus, Christianity, nothing anywhere. So what where are the Christian principles? They're not there. And you know, since we're talking about that, about rituals again, and I had to go back up. I'm going to read a couple of snippets as I go along and you guys can think about your response. This is during the initiation. Are you willing to be submissive and in every way to subjugate yourself to the highest authority? As a candidate, I would say I am. What proof do you have would be the president? Repeat after me. Show your submission by kneeling. I show it by kneeling. Candidates, are you willing to enter deeper into the mysteries of our organization? If so, state I am. Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority is perpetuated through the faith and trust its members have endangered in the ideal and aim of the organization. Alpha Kappa Alpha it's unknown if it will provide sweetness or bitterness to your life, but you must believe it. It's not promised that the path of life often thrown with storms will be more smooth as a soar of Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority, but you must believe it will be. The bonds of sisterhood are so, of sisterhood are so, so strong. Faith and trust are blind with no reservations. Have you this faith and trust in Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority. I'm reading this and my heart is just broken over and over and over again. If you listen to these words with a true desire to serve the Lord God, everything in what I just said in the fact of the eternal spirit they're talking about is the sorority. And you are kneeling to show your submission to the sorority. You are promising to keep and obey the sorority. It's not delineating, it's not delineating between you're promising for this organization to support, you know, serving the community. There's, this is a blanket statement that your your life is now beholden to the sorority. There is nothing in this whole ritual book from page one to the end that tells you about don't look at Alpha Kappa Alpha as a idol, you know. No, it is the God, the eternal spirit. The, the the Alpha Kappa Alpha, again, the spirit that's behind it. And like another sister said, what spirit is that? Whose spirit is it? But they will tell you some of the arguments that actually it's not a spiritual organization. But all through the ritual, they say this is a spiritual matter. This is a spiritual thing. And words like faith, believe, and trust. Again, the word of God is very clear. You should have no other gods. But Alpha Kappa Alpha is telling you that they're your God now. You're going to obey its laws and promote its ideals. You be the judge, you those who think that it's of God and it's okay of God, that God is okay with you. Again, saying these words. I kind of wanted to just read like the first line of the initiation hymn where it kind of speaks for itself, where it says, hail Alpha Kappa Alpha dear, we greet thee here tonight and may this noble sisterhood be always our delight. And it's just like that kind of speaks for itself is letting you know we're greeting the spirit of AKA. And it's just like we're always inviting these spirits in. And it's just like. We, we we see like how demonic this is. Um, like even as you all were speaking, I kind of I'm not sh I'm pretty sure this was just for my my um chapter, but we kind of sung a song um where it 
where it says, I know the ending, did the ending end it in? It said, um, at the end of a journey, basically our AKA journey, it's like we pledge AKA on the cloudy day. And at the end of the journey, the gates read, the were the pearly gates and the gates read Alpha Kappa Alpha. And the Lord had to show me like, Hey, Keisha, when you were singing that song, you know, like as you read, if you read the word of God, like in Revelation, it, you know, many people kind of describe the, the gates into heaven as pearly gates. And on those gates, you know, the gates of the, you know, the 12 tribes, but AKA, when we sing these songs, this gate, it's like we're entering into heaven. You know, and on this gate, it says, a.k.a. the pearly gates, and we're entering into it. And the Lord had to show me that, like, how that represents, like, what they're trying to do there. And I'm just like, like, I I felt bad. Like, how Miss Erica, like, she said, I felt bad, like, to really realize what you were saying, you know, um, working all of your life and doing all of this. You work hard for a.k.a. It's just like, are you realizing what you're saying? It totally goes against the word of God. But we said those things and we did things, you know? Yes. And I, I wanted to um, chip in a little bit on some of the lyrics that I can remember from different songs that we were singing on special days, or if we were just having like something going on, we would come together and sing in a circle. And we would sing things like, I see the light. I see the alpha light. The pink and green reign supreme. So that's a direct insult to, to the most high God because he is the most high, which means supreme, which means the name above every name. We were always referencing alpha, like the alpha light, the poses that we did when we would I would put my pinky up in the sky and look at it. That was that was considered a pose of um looking at alpha, or if I had my my hands position like ivies on my side. And in this stance where I was looking up at the light, I was that that was a pose where I was looking at the alpha light. That the alpha and omega is Jesus Christ. So using those using those, using that name to reference something else we, we we did not I'm telling you I know I did not know what I was talking about looking up looking at alpha referencing alpha and there's another song that i can remember where it would say um kneel low for alpha like i remember we wouldn't actually do a dance where we kneeled low and we kneeled down for alpha so who were we talking about and if alpha and omega is supposed to be jesus christ and we're always constantly referring to the light and in the pink and green light and the alpha light all of that stuff um, is what I can recall being being wrong and blasphemous because we're taking God's name and using it for something else. And yeah, that's my little snippet. Yeah, and I don't want to take up time, but I want to say this one last thing about is Alpha Kappa Alpha a God? This is the end of the whole thing before you get your letters and all that stuff. May you always remember that you are not only joining with individuals, but you are uniting with the Alpha Kappa Alpha. Is it is Alpha Kappa a, a person? What is the Alpha Kappa Alpha? Because it is a God. And I kind of wanted to say some from what Miss Erica was saying, like when we're uniting, we're coming together. Like we're yoking ourselves with that. And we already know what the word of God says. We can't yoke ourselves with like, um, but we can't, light can't fellowship with dark in, in darkness. And that's what we were doing. We were yoking ourselves with unbelievers. We were yoking ourselves with, you know, darkness and that can't fellowship together. And like, even with like Khalil, what she was speaking about, like she was speaking about like alpha, just think about it when we were, saying this we put so much emphasis on the alpha part when we said aka when we were saying the name 
But when you think about when we say about God, God is the alpha and omega. It's just like the same thing we do with like with our father. We're doing it for this sorority. It's just like, no. But it, that's why it's just so much emphasis on the alpha when we say it with AKA. We're doing the same thing when we do it with our father. When we're saying his, you know, who he is. It's just like, it's just so much. It's crazy. Thank you so much, ladies. So now we're going to go to the next question. So this kind of came up a little bit, but I want to expound. It kind of came up in conversation. But talk about the spiritual effects um, as far as like being in the organization that affected you as a person, like your personality, your traits, how you treated your, how did you operate with friendships? Like some of that kind of came out, but I want to talk a little bit about that, even about relationships. Like if you were in an organization and let's say you were married at the time or whatever, how did that come up in your relationships with like your husband, your spouse, or even dating relationships? Like, were you one of the women that wanted to date only men that were Greek, you know, all those kind of things. Talk a little bit about that. Um, I'll say one quick thing about me. My friends even told me I changed. Um, but one thing about me is that I got really mean. Like, um, it, it's funny because I, I, I consider myself like a goofball and stuff, but that like persona of, oh, the AKs are the stuck up, you know, s s like snuffy girls. I was kind of like embodying that personality and I was very mean. Um, even some of my line sisters at the time had to say like, yo, chill out. Like they're just walking on the plot. And I'm like, no, they're not supposed to be walking on our plot. Like I, mm, I was that ride or die. Like I was ready to haze some girls. We were pre-pledging some girls. And I was like, Oh no, they don't know the founders. Let's let's get it moving. Let's get it moving. Um, I was very mean. I'll say that. So honestly, like I was a hot mess. Like I literally, like I I said before, you know, I always felt like I was a Christian, but I slowly, like after AKA, I slowly started like doing stuff that I had said I was not going to do. And I'm not blaming AKA for that, but I am blaming myself for not being the person that I was prior to AKA, if that makes sense. And so um, like I like before AKA, I was not sexually active. And then afterwards, I struggled with um, fornication for a very long time. And um, I had never drank before. And then afterwards, I started drinking. And these things might not have been immediate. It wasn't like I crossed on Sunday and Monday, I was drinking and having sex, but these were things that I like, it wasn't even a, a question of with whether I would do it or not. And then after I became an AK and I'm around people who like literally are making it like cool, like, oh, there's a kickback. Of course there's alcohol, there's eight juice and Sigma influence and whatever they call the Q, the um, oil. I thought, who oh, I just love me some oil. Like you just, you're around these environments. And I, I literally had to stop and tell myself out of all the guys that I've messed with, only two of them have not been Greek. Two of them I did not meet from being Greek. And one is my husband. And so like that, that, that shows you something. And it's like, and I'm not trying to just put myself on blast, but like, it's not a small number. It's just not like I was literally out there. I struggled. I literally got to a point where I was just like, I know for a fact that I'm not going to make it in. If I continue to fornicate, God help me. And as I started asking him to pick away these things that were, not of him that I knew were a direct, uh, I mean, a, a complete opposite of what he has called for me to do. I realized that AKA was like the reason why I wasn't able to reach the full potential of going back to him and living a set apart lifestyle. I, I knew it was, I, I didn't want to admit to it, but I knew for a fact that it was. And then I remember like my husband who also is not Greek. I remember um, I was at like my cousin's initiation and um, he had called me or whatever. And he's like, what are you doing? I was like, nothing. Um, we just got done with the Ritz. And now we're about to blah, blah, blah. He's like, the Ritz. I said, yeah, the rituals, you know, like the initiation rituals. And he's like, that sounds demonic. And I was like, please, like, you don't know what you're talking about. Like, it's totally cool, you know, doing all that. And like the fact that he's not Greek and he hears the just hears the word rituals. And he's like, pause, oh, that don't sound right. You know, so it's like when you're when you're in it and you're 
constantly being around people who are in it, you're not ever getting someone, an outside perspective that's going to tell you like, yo, this is goofy. Like, seriously. And so my husband literally was that for me. And at that moment, I started to feel conviction. I was like, no, nah, rituals is cool because uh, senior skip day is a ritual. Like, you know, literally trying to reason with myself, not making any sense at all. Thank you, Amber. Anybody else want to chime in? I want to give a word real quick as far as, um, and I'm talking about the word of God. Um, Galatians um, chapter five, verses 19. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, uh, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I have told you in the past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. That is Galatians 5, 19 through verse 21. And so we're talking about the spirit that's in, whether it be AKA, Delta, Omega, Alpha, Sigma, Gamma, Rho, Zeta, Freemasonry, Order of Eastern Star, all of this are works of the flesh. So then you get the fruit of the work of the flesh instead of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So does anybody else want to talk about that? Chime in a little bit. Amen. Because as you were reading off that list, immediately came to my mind, every one of those sins are evident in every every sorority, every chapter, every one, every one of them. I mean, in my experience, in the last chapter I was in, we actually got kicked out of a church because there was a physical fight. And I, as the Holy Spirit brought to my remembrance as I was getting ready to get out, everything I experienced, you know, and quickly, like my last, the last year I was in it, I became the chaplain. And I recall to myself, I told myself, this must be of God. And now I can bring God into this ungodly chapter. That's what I told myself. But God didn't bring me to that to have me stay in. He got me into that position so I could have my eyes wide open. Because that's when my eyes were like, this is wicked. <laughs> I mean, again, wicked. Here I'm the chaplain. And I'm like thinking this of God. But no, he was like, I need you to see the truth of this whole thing. It's not of me. Because like she said, when she read that that, that scripture, every, when you say, and I say every, every sin, every sin, Jesus said that you will know who belongs to me, one, by their love, and two, by their fruit. And we see what is the fruit of these organizations. Yeah, okay, so they, again, they have supposedly good feed the homeless and scholarships, but everything else, pride, selfishness, like you said, foreign and sexual immorality, drunkenness. I mean, I don't have to repeat the list and it's crystal clear. You go to any chapter, any group, you're going to find these sins. And, you know, and unfortunately you're going to find a lot of church too, but that's another topic, but I'm just saying, but in the sororities, again, he says, sure, let me see your fruit. And they'll say, oh, look at all of our good deeds, but ignore all of our evil. And the Bible is clear. That's a hypocrite. I kind of want to piggyback off that. Um, like when you were saying like how the Lord had, you know, you was like you saying, you know, you became chaplain and you was like, okay, well, maybe the Lord is going to use me. And many people feel like, okay, God is going to put me in something like this, which is demonic to bring light to him. And it's just like, you have to ask yourself, why would God tell me to do the very thing? that goes against his word. Cause you have some people, they like, okay, well God told me to join this sorority so I can bring light to it. And it's just like, he's not gonna ask you to go serve the day. He's not gonna ask you to sign yourself over and do all, everything he tells you not to do just to bring light. Like, you know, you don't have to do that in order to bring people into the light. So it's just like many people say that, well, God knows my heart and it's just like, he do. Just because you speak out of your mouth that doesn't mean nothing. I mean, it means something when you say your words, but it's just like, just because you say you, you love Christ and you are a follower of Christ, what are your actions say? You know what I'm saying? 
because many people say it, but their hearts are far away from him. And it's just like, where is your heart? Because some people not even willing to give this up because their heart is so deeply rooted within this sorority. And it's just like, you have to be willing and ready to give up anything and everything for Christ. And some people cannot do it. And when you cannot do that, you have to ask yourself, why? Because many people don't ask themselves, why? Why can't I give this up for Christ? And if you're not willing to give that up, then you're not gonna spend eternity with him. And it's just like, it's that's just the hard truth. You know what I'm saying? So. Many people have to understand that you're going to be held accountable. Your fruit says a lot. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. So you can't say, OK, well, I'm, I'm this, I'm that. But your fruit shows otherwise. You got to cut it out and you got to cut it out from the root. And it's just like, what are you rooted in? Because it's not Christ. But hey. I wanted to answer by saying that a lot of the changes that I saw were I became very prideful and people will instantly say, oh, that's, you know, we label sins a lot, which one is bigger and which one is smaller, but that's considered one of the seven deadly sins, being prideful and thinking that, you know, I was able to get this, you know, God is, you know, God is just with me and I'm, I'm going to be able to get this if I want it. I'll be able to get this if I want it. And then if something didn't go my way, I would think to myself like, well, no, she can't do that because why, you know, I have this, I have this going for myself. I just, I joined this organization. I've been doing this in the organization and that was just one of them. But the attention um, that would come from different people like men and uh, causing me to operate in lust a lot of the times, as um, Amber said, because you get all of these people saying, oh, she's an AKA, Not a lot of, and me pledging as a sophomore, a lot of people were like, oh, I got to get her. She's the young one. And all of, it's just like, you get all of this attention, all of these advances, and you're expected to respond a certain way because you know, this person is Greek versus not Greek. So yes to the, the part of wanting to now be with people that were only Greek and actually being in a relationship with someone who was going through the process at the same time that I was going through the process. And I believe that we damaged each other, you know, inviting those things into our life at the same time. And just the, the changes that I saw happening with him, the changes that we saw ha that I that was happening with me, we would have never attributed it to the organizations that we were in. But we were very damaged, and we were damaging each other because we were just we had spiritually given ourselves over to so much darkness, not knowing it was filling us with so much so much else, and we we, we just we had no idea. And even now, I will say, I was meaner. I there was a time where people were not able to join the chapter at all because of being in um, suspension or something, or it was, it was just something going on where I had to take leadership and constantly um, try to set and make myself seem like I was this strong person. Cause I had to now be over all of these people and keep them in line. And I just remember being mean. I even remember asking them to repeat after me, and thinking in my head, oh, she didn't say it serious enough. She not serious. I'm going to make sure I'm going to make note of that. Okay. Okay. So even in secret meetings, when we would look at people to consider if they were fit, the things that I would say, the things that I would laugh, like even, even if I was just there, I laughed about it. I laughed with the other people that would say crazy things about the next person. I was there condoning it. I was in agreement with it. And everything else that was going on, lying to the graduate chapters. I, 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 even if I wasn't doing the lying, I let the lie happen and not say nothing. I, I condoned it. I was in agreement with it. I did it. Thank you for being so transparent, Kalia. Thank you. And this is really helping people. Everybody is really getting understanding. So. And I want to share that, you know, just in 
And I know a lot of people are in the comments doing that, but I, I just want to share the appreciation of everybody being bold and being obedient to the Lord, because this is what we're called to do. Right. And there's people on the other side of your obedience. And, you know, Kalia, there's somebody that's listening and, and getting understanding and it will be able to take this and share and and show how this is not of the Lord and and what you're doing for the Lord and everybody it's just it's just awesome and i just i just thank you for just your transparency um so i want to i want to move to our next question so let's talk about the spiritual effects and implications being in these organizations have you know now we've talked a little bit you know we've talked about the spiritual like how you you know affected like your personality how your behaviors we kind of we even talked about um the reality of it is, is this is not of God, but what do you feel like the, the true spiritual implication of being in any of these secret societies are? Because a lot of people feel like this is OK and that they can still enter into the kingdom and that God is going to be like, well done, that good and faithful servant, even though all these things that you shared tonight, you know, have been done. And so let's talk a little bit about that from your perspective. Um, spiritually, I remember, um, when you all were talking about the book earlier that we had to sign, um, I had a vision one time that I was standing before the Lord to see if my name was in the Lamb's book of life. And it was like, nah, it's in that book, the, the AK book. And then for me, I was like, see, and the, the interesting thing about these Greek organizations, like God, this is like, I was like taking my time today, just thinking about like what I would say. And God was like, you know, showing things to me. I've been studying a lot, like with reading the Bible. I, I've been reading um, first and second Kings and through, literally throughout the, this, these whole two books of the Bible, the children of Israel are constantly going into captivity because they're serving other gods. God is freeing them as soon as they're free back serving other gods, back into captivity oh, over, over, over and over and over again. And then God showed me, and like, this is, this is also another thesis for a different day, but I do believe that our ancestors in America who were slaves were the children of Israel. I feel that we are descendants from the children of Israel. And it's a literally history repeating itself because as you see, we was brought into captivity in America as soon as we were freed, 40 years later, here's Alpha Phi Alpha. And we're back to serving these gods that brought us into captivity previously. So this is not, this is something literally that's been happening since let there be light. So you can't say it's not that big of a deal. Spiritually, it's okay. Back in the Old Testament, God was smiting these people. Because we live on the side of grace. We say, well, you know, Jesus knows my heart and I and Jesus loves me and I, I, I love him and the grace and I'm forgiven. And I know what y'all said in the rituals. That was a little iffy, but, you know, it's not serious. Like we abuse grace. We abuse grace because we're on this side. We're on this side. We don't we don't we can read the Bible if you read the Bible, if you believe the Bible and you can see what happened in the Old Testament. And, and for the most part, people who read the Old Testament, they say, I'm glad I wasn't living then because people love their sin. At the end of the day, they love their sin and they know because Jesus died and all you have to do is repent in order to get God to forgive you. Then they, they abuse it. They take advantage of it. And that's exactly what this is. Like the, the black Greek letter organizations is the same way back in the old Testament when they were building altars for ball. Seriously, it's the exact same thing is just the present day version of it. So it's absolutely spiritual. It's not a joke. It's not something that God is just like, oh, y'all kids have fun. No, this is not that. This is not that. You absolutely have to answer for it. And when I think about kingdom come, this is even before I denounce. When I think about kingdom come, people aren't going to be down here in AKA, Delta, Q and Sigma. They're just not. It's not going to be like that. That is not going to be a part of kingdom come. So if it's not something that would be in God's perfect world, what makes you think that it would be okay? Because it's not. 
Yes, and I wanted to um, read this um, scripture here that I have um, for the because I like what you said earlier about how we always say Christian principles every time, every time. I remember when I first first denounced, everybody came at me with the Christian principles. No, this is Christian principles, like like ready to fight about those Christian principles, but couldn't say, what are you talking about? <laughs> and I just want to say this is Romans chapter one, verse 25. Well, I'll start at 24. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. And this organization was a lust of our heart. We wanted it so bad. We were willing to do anything, no matter what the word on the on the letter was, no matter what, how many rituals we had to do, how many people we had to talk to, be disrespected by, be laughed at by, be ridiculed by. We were the lust of our heart was to be in that organization and we were going to do it by any means necessary, just like the rest of the people um, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. And this is where 25 comes in who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. So by using scripture, one little piece of scripture in a ritual and, 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 and stating that that's what the ritual was based off of. Cause from what I can remember the, one of the, the, the main ritual, I mean, the main scripture was a conversation between Ruth and Naomi. And I just remember that po that portion. We read that one part where they 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 told each other they would be sisters forever. And uh, all of a sudden the, the, the organization is found off of Christian principles because of what Ruth and Naomi said to each other. That makes no sense. You take the scripture. So you're taking a, a, a true story, you know, because God had a purpose for what took place between in that book, in that story. But we took we take it, twist it and worship it. And, and now, as this scripture says, we are serving the creature, the the people that God created, the founders more than the creator. And another thing, as we go down, it says, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, meaning you don't spend time to know what you need to know. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. So if you don't want to know, guess what? You, your mind is going to continue to be darkened. Now you, you just, you'll never know because this is what you wanted. The lust of your heart put you in a reprobate mind. And as we go further down, God talks um, in the scripture, Paul talks about those who are without understanding covenant breakers. Um, we, we can't, keep thinking that just because, oh, I didn't know. Oh, I didn't know. God is going to remember, like, as we all said, ladies, we were people that came up in, in church, came up in, you know, we came up in some form of knowledge of God. A lot of us were in church constantly, but God is expecting us to love him with our whole heart, whole mind. That's the first and greatest commandment, which strengthened everything in us. And in his word, he says that to love him is to keep his commandments. So if you love him, which if the first and greatest commandment is to love him with your whole heart, soul and mind. And in his definition of love is keeping his commandments. Then you're not keeping the first and greatest commandment because you're not keeping the one that that's telling you you should not be um, making vows and, and, and speaking words like this and, and kneeling at altars. And worshiping other gods, that that's not love. And he's coming back for people that love him with everything in them and that are not trying to make excuses to make what they want fit. We he's looking for people that's making what he said fit, not what we want to fit, because that's when you love somebody, when you really when you're willing to give all of your self to that person. That's who he's looking for. That's who he's coming back for. And you will know. On that day, if you were one of those people. Thank you so much. And I want to mention something. We didn't touch on this earlier, but the whole concept of you talked about, you know, gods, goddesses. So with AKA uh, the goddess Themis, 
is mentioned, obviously, you know, you know, in, in the rituals and that goddess, um, she was considered to be, um, I want to say she was considered to be the second wife of Zeus uh, in Greek mythology. So you have these gods and goddesses and a lot of people in these organizations don't think that this matters, that, did, that this, this means it, it doesn't mean anything. And then on the AKA uh, shield is Atlas. And Atlas is another Greek god. Um, and, and so all these things, you know, are against like Kalia talked about. I mean, the very first commandment. And, you know, when God says you shall have no other gods before him, it's not just he's talking about next to him, beside him, before him, behind him, underneath, just period. And so, um, you know, that's very key of what you were saying, uh, Kalia. Does anybody else want to chime in before we go to the next question? All right. So let's talk about your process of renouncing and denouncing, a.k.a. Why did you decide to fully denounce, um, even withdraw? Because I know some people formally withdrew. Why did you do that instead of just staying and being inactive, which is what a lot of people will do? They'll just stop paying dues and just go inactive and think that that's OK. I, I consider it like just being an active and it was literally because I didn't want to let it go. Um, and I remembered I was watching the story of Joseph um, with my father. He loves this, the movie. We watch it all the time together. And the first time I watched it, when Joseph's mother died um, after having Benjamin, I was like, I don't even know why I asked him. I was like, Daddy, why she die? And he said, because she didn't want to give up the idols. Wasn't talking about AKA. He was literally talking about Rachel period. And so when it came time for me to realize, like, yeah, I need to denounce, this is what I'm going to, I have to do. Um, and I was like, well, you know, maybe I'll just go inactive and I just won't do it. I knew it was because I didn't want to give up the idols and I did not want to be like Rachel and die because of disobedience. And so that's when I was like, okay, I typed up the letter and I was like, I don't know when I'm going to send it off, but I'm going to send it off. I just don't know when. And then um, I had shared this dream on the previous broadcast, but I'll share it again. I had a dream. I had typed the letter up. And then a couple of days after I typed the letter up, I had a dream that the um, the great seven year tribulation started and people were running around trying to get groceries. Cars were crashing into each other, just crazy stuff. And the only thing that was on my mind is nationals is probably closed. Now it's too late for me to denounce. And then I woke up that next morning like I'm not passing go. I'm not collecting two hundred dollars. I'm not doing anything. I'm getting this letter sent off. My husband's a notary. So I was like, I'm printing this letter off. I need you to notarize it, sign it. And I'm putting it in the mail, period. So. Yeah, um, for me, I wanted to make sure that the door was closed um, and I kind of thought of it as like leaving a job or leaving a marriage, you know. When you get married, you sign those legal documents and, you know, you can you can separate, you can live in two different houses if you want to break that relationship. But it's actually not official until you actually do the divorce and you sign the divorce papers. That's when it's legit. Um, same thing is if you're leaving a job, you can say, oh, I'm never going back to that job again. I'm, I'm just not going to go anymore uh, Monday through Friday. But you actually have to pack up your stuff and leave. Um, and of course, sign those papers. So for me, um, I definitely uh, denounced spiritually when the Lord opened my eyes. Um, I was praying um, and renouncing every word, every, um, every yeah, just just every word that um, I really spoke over myself and into my life. I burned all my stuff because I'm like, yeah, no, no going back. Um, I put in my letter because I'm just like, no, I'm done. And, and for me, it was kind of like, I didn't know everything, you know, at first, like why at that point, I was just like, Lord, I just, I, I'm at the place where I just love you too much. And I'm sorry that what I did actually hurt you. I'm going to cut off all ties, all ties, everything that I did to get in, I'm going to do what, you know, the opposite of that to get out. Um, and yeah, that was kind of that process. Um, it was hard. I wasn't that vocal about it when it first happened because I was still like, oh my gosh. But 
as the Lord continued to open my eyes and give me dreams, he really made me realize like, oh my gosh, I was in bondage and spiritual chains. And as vocal, you know, we always say this as vocal as I was in it, um, the, the, the gospel was just pounding in me to just share and to, to really like set the captives free. Like y'all get out of here, get out of here. Fire, fire. You know how you talked about snatching people from the fire and some gently, like I was like, fire, fire, get out. Um, because I realized like, oh my gosh, like I needed to get out completely. But um, that's kind of how I renounced. Yes. I, I just want to say that the campus that I went to, the school that I went to, Florida a and University, I love, I, I'm a, I love being a Rattler, love it. But everything on that campus was made big. Everything was accentuated. Everything was emphasized. Everything, every every single thing. I played into emphasizing my life by being in campus leadership and, and doing just so many things because you, coming into the organization, you have to show that you have had had something, some type of work experience or community service experience. I was big and bold, every doing everything on campus. On the for those that have gone to HBCU, the Royal Court. I mean, being on the Royal Court and literally every not every single one of them, but probably about four out of the six women that were on the court all pledged aka the same time literally that was big I, I i i was i had accentuated my life everybody saw me as aka and leader and but first what they saw me as was aka before i left that campus i said i have to get that image off of me and i have to let every single person know on this campus because i'm well known when people have a big platform god expects us to use it the right way we use that big platform for all just to revel in all of that popularity and, 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 and everything is about you and everybody loves you. Everybody, everybody's congratulating you. Oh, you're always doing such great things. Oh, you're this, you're that, you're so nice. Oh, you don't. And I had to, I had to say out of all of that attention I was getting, it's time for me to show God that his attention means more to me. And I know everybody won't be clapping for me on this campus when I do it, but heaven the host of angels the the cherubims that meant more to me to know that heaven was going to see that with the influence and the the name that i had on my campus and i don't want to make myself sound you know all grandiose and everything but people knew who i was and i'm that's just what it is i wanted to show heaven that i am for heaven not for myself not for my my reputation that I had, not for what I, what I had been known for, which was being the AKA, the nice one, the the one who was no. Now I want to be known as the girl who was crazy enough to give her testimony for Jesus. I want everybody to know before I leave this campus that that is no longer my label. Don't ever associate with me, that with me ever again. I love the Lord too much to have left and and not do it when He told me to do it. Well, for me, um, just really just being inactive, um, I decided to just cut away and just do away with it um, because I'm just a firm believer that nothing happens by coincidence. So like if you heard like my my testimony when, you know, when I was talking about how it all came about, like God, he brings everyone that you cross every day. It's for a reason. And when that conversation came up, like in this specific Bible study, it's like, that's for a reason. And it's like, I know that there was no one but God. So it's just like, in that moment, like just after like just doing my research and just reading everything and just like God just like begin to just bring things back to my mind. Things that I couldn't even remember. Like I couldn't even remember things. And I just like, this is God. And it's just like, when I like, as those things were in my mind, like the Lord told me, okay, what are you going to do? And that was it. I'm going to have to like, you're literally, you're going to have to choose who you're going to serve. And that was it. And I had to choose in that moment. Are you going to, are you going to serve Satan or are you going to serve God? And it's just like, I, there was no, there's no holding on to it. You know, 
just being an active, you can always just pay and, you know, you can become right back active. So it's just like, that's not cutting it off. You know, that's just kind of, you, you got to take it off at the root. And it's just like, you signed your name in that book. You have to get it removed. You have to repent. You have to renounce those things because the doors that you open up, the spirits that you allow to, to enter into your life, they're walking with you for that lifetime. Remember, because that's that lifetime. You're, you're in it for a lifetime. So it's just like you have to understand the spiritual aspect behind everything that you're doing. And like even with like um, Eve, like um, Evelyn was saying, like about the whole like your like your pair of all of the things that you had around your house. You have to burn that stuff because the spirits that's attached to it. Everything that was given to you in the name of AKA and in this is spirits attached to these things. And many people, they may think, OK, what you 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 you're doing too much. But no, like. It's spirits attached to that. So you have to remove those things. You have to just cut. You have to do away with it with completely because of the spiritual aspect that's tied to the things that you have. That's a tie to the sorority. You just have to cut it off. And I just had to do away with it completely because. That's what God gave me. It's either this or that. No in between, no halfway in, no halfway out. It was just that. Yeah. And so <clears throat> for me, you know, I'm sure our, a lot of Christians, if you're Christian, we go through these dry spells and things. And then we wake up and get, I want to be really right with God. And so that's what I told myself. And I got rid of, stop listening to a lot, mo most music, because if you listen to the lyrics, it's straight up demonic sermon, you know. And so I told, I got rid of music, stopped watching these movies. And I said, I'm right with you, God, right? And he said, no, I still have this one thing against you. I was like, what is it? And that's when he started showing me the truth about the sorority I was in. And initially I was just gonna go in active, but the Holy Spirit spoke to me loud and clear. Did you sneak in to this sorority? And of course I didn't. When I crossed, I was I proudly went out with my little letters and you know shouted to the rooftops. I'm an AKA now, and proudly wore my colors everywhere I went. Everybody knew that I who you know what part of the organization that says I was in. I wasn't ashamed to do that. And so crystal clear word of God, pew, pew, pew. Jesus said in Matthew chapter ten, if you are ashamed of me, if you deny me before men, I'm going to deny you before the Father. And two, it's in Luke, let me see, I wrote it down, Luke chapter 12, where Jesus says that there's nothing, whatever you've, whatever you've said, whatever you've said in the dark shall be heard in the light. And whatever you've whispered in private rooms shall be proclaimed on the housetops. So the Holy Spirit and his word convicted me that I did not sneak out of AKA. So going inactive and not saying nothing about it or why I was going inactive. Again, I was basically saying, Lord, I'm too ashamed to say why I'm, I'm getting out. And, and, and no, like everybody has said, if nobody in this world ever, ever, ever likes me, ever, ever gives me a high five. So what? As long as God is OK with me, that's all that matters. Because at the end of the day, like she said, we're going to have to give an account for everything I've said, everything I've did, everything I've conceived in my heart. And how could I stand before my creator and say, Lord, I was too afraid to speak out on this. I was afraid to, you know, say why I denounced or why I renounced or even to say anything about it. And so that made the, 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 the answer for me was very crystal clear. I love the Lord God. And so, no, I wasn't going to sneak out. And I was going to proclaim because he tells us to speak the truth in love. He tells us to expose the works of darkness. Don't collude with them because if you're silent, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be trying to point fingers, but if you're silent, you're like, like colluding. You're colluding with the devil. He tells us don't collude with the world, expose the works of the devil. So that's, again, I didn't, like I said, that conviction again, when I got convicted, I got rid of everything and it's true. We need to get rid of everything because we will rationalize keeping some stuff. I actually had a pair of real pearls, real pearls, nothing the fake stuff you can buy at the dollar store, real pearls. And I had threw everything away, the t-shirts and all this other stuff, but God kept like poking at me like, 
you got some more stuff. And I was like, well, what is it, Lord? This is months later. Like, I think I'm doing really good with the guy, but I still felt, had this uneasiness. And then he was like, you know, I come across a post about throwing away stuff. And I'm like, you know, the pearls, you know, I've denounced, I've renounced over the pearls. So the pearls are okay. But the Lord said, why did you buy them pearls in the first place? And I could not deny. I bought them because I was buying them in relation to my sorority life. And first I thought, well, I can sell them. And Holy Spirit was silent. Like, why, what are you going to, you're going to buy, they're going to sell this to get something out of it. And so finally I was like, okay, I'm going to give them away. He's like, so you're going to give this wicked something to somebody else? <laughs> so I ended up just, I threw them away. I threw them away. Just pay, that'll be passing on the spirit. That's, that's what it would be done. All right. So before we get to the next question, I want to go back to something that was posed in the comments, which is a great question uh, that we definitely uh, should address. So here's the question, and this is from uh, Therese. So how should we address or approach Christian leaders or pastors uh, who are in these organizations? And if your pastor is Greek or they're a Mason or, or any of that, and they have denounced, should you remain underneath their covering? Oh my gosh. Um, well, what time is? <laughs> this is good right here. I'm going to um, let y'all have it. I'm going to be cool. Um, okay, it was two parts to it. <sighs> How should you approach them? And then should you remain under someone that is the pastor that's in a secret society of any kind? Mm. Okay, how should you approach them? Okay, so uh, we're looking at, y'all help me with the scripture. Um, it's in Matthew about, you know, the proper way to, you know, approach your brother or sister who may have wronged you or is in sin, you know, so that's good. The first thing you want to do is truly approach them. Um, of course, before you do that, prayer, prayer. Um, this is kind of off topic, but I don't want to hear anymore that prayer isn't effective. That's the first and foremost thing to do, because who do we rely on? We rely on the Lord. Holy Spirit leads us. So praying for them that the Lord will soften their heart, um, that no matter how the conversation goes, you can plant a seed. Um, and then, of course, you know, in that place of prayer, you know, actually how to approach them. You know, if you're looking in Jude, you know, if you need to do some snatch, you know, you need to, um, uh, do it gently, but overall, they're your leader, so you have to honor them. So you do it in honor. Um, but it's being honest. The Lord, I believe this is something the Lord is showing me. This is an area um, that is a co of concern for your life and also me because I'm under your covering. Um, and of course, depending on how that conversation goes, um, you continue to pray for them, uh, bring somebody else with you. If that don't work out, that that's a whole nother story. Um, personally, as far as should you stay under their cover, I want to say run, 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 run. Tomorrow is not promise. We need to get out of this um, mentality of tolerating everything um, out of love. No, no, no. We don't tolerate those things, um, especially if you do approach them and they're unrepentant and very both. Um, that's why I would say, but at the same time, you know, you really have to be led by the Holy Spirit to guide you in what to do. Um, but I think a covering is a very big, serious thing. And, um, huh. I, yeah, that, but my opinion would be to, you need to get from under that covering. Cause guess what else is covering you? That spirit is covering you. Um, no matter how great they preach, no matter how, holy they appear to be um even if you know they don't really even talk about it and it's just something that spirit that is attached to their life is covering you as well and it has some type of influence because it has legal right over their life and everything that they touch it touches it in a way um that may seem extreme or dramatic but look you, who's standing before the lord at the end of the day right um but yeah and I, I just I appreciate everything that you said, and I completely agree 
And I, my personal, um, I'm, that was a great question. And my personal um, testimony is I did not remain under that um, covering because after having the conversation with them coming and talking to them one-on-one, -on -one, the advice that I received was contrary to what the Lord was telling me. And I just expected that um, when, when, you know, I really, really, I knew that the Holy Spirit of Christ was saying, this, this is urgent. You have to do this. I didn't have any peace. That was, that was my graduating semester. I couldn't, I couldn't finish applications. I couldn't finish writing the essays I needed to write. And, and to know that the, the covering and the leadership that I had didn't see what, what was happening after I was explaining the sleepless nights and telling them that this is what it was for. And I had been holding back from telling, you know, I just, I didn't, I didn't want to continue under that leadership anymore because the Holy Spirit was just, it. I, I had to move in a different direction. You do have to be led by the spirit of Christ in, in that decision, but I, I would say no. And another thing I couldn't remember, Evelyn, you said something that made me think about, I, I can't completely remember, but you, the, I guess in scripture wise, you, I just remember, I recall saying to them that this is idolatry. I remember painting ivies, all kind of colors and swiveling it up with pink and green and writing the, the, the symbols, you know, that's, we, we're not sitting at the altars and worshiping every day, but at the end of the meetings, we are reinstating a covenant. We can't serve two masters. We can't have two covenants that our soul is committed to at the same time. It it does not work. And the Bible just, just it talks about Israel breaking the covenant. You know, he's a covenant keep it God. And he sent his only begotten son to 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 redeem us back because we had kept breaking just as a whole. The people of God just kept breaking it over and over and over. And now when you when you know that you're serving two masters, when you are unwilling to let one go and still say that, oh, no, I'm a I'm a believer, you know, that that's a that's a being that's being a double minded man, unstable in all your ways. You don't know you. you how do you lead with that instability taking place in you? I'm not sure. And, you know, that may not be a, a complete answer, but you ultimately the Holy Spirit has to lead you. Anybody else want to chime in? So just recapping on what obviously Evelyn says is, I think that, you know, essentially she's saying the conversation first, uh, you know, like with a pastor or a leader, if you're able to have that kind of, I hate to say it for a lack of a better term, like have access to, to, to have that conversation, you know what I mean? Um, and, and do it in a, you would do it in a respectful manner. No, no way that you, no different than you would do it with any other human being. Right. Um, um, actually it was my mother that asked this question. Um, and I know who she's talking about because she's asking about like how does she approach a friend who literally just celebrated their Founders Day and has it like all over their social media. So I think um, you use what tools are available. So like you can share videos of people who are sharing their testimonies, like all, all of you and other people. Um, you know, like our ministry created like a. Uh, a gospel track like that's something that God had me create it's like a brochure and I actually someone asked me for it and they gave it to their pastor um and that when they gave them the brochure they actually asked to have a meeting with the pastor and I said hey I want to have this conversation with you about this I'm going to leave this with you and I want to have a meeting with you and that's how they approach their pastor um so I think those are options, but I am in 100% agreement with everybody else is um, that you wouldn't sit under, if you, if God has pulled you out and you know the truth, you wouldn't sit under a homosexual pastor. You wouldn't sit under someone that, you know, is, I don't know, like in the church, they sleeping with people in the congregate. I will hope that you wouldn't, <laughs> um, but 
this would be no different that you would sit under open sin and rebellion. You know, Evelyn said something very key about someone that's trying to, you know, repent and, and do all those kind of things. And if they're humble and repentant, they will probably sit themselves down in order to get themselves right with the Lord. But for you to sit under open rebellion, you are now, Erica said this, you're coming into agreement with it. And there's a scripture that actually, I really need to find that scripture. There is a scripture that actually says about you kind of bring on that same judgment by being in agreement with sin and rebellion. And I said, and that's what we need to be careful about. And Evelyn said this, we do too much of that these days in the name of, it's a false sense of love. I know we want to be respectful, but we do it in order to just accept anything. And that's to the detriment of the body. This is why the body is so corrupt and compromised and lukewarm, unfortunately. But when we look at the early church, that's not how the early church was. The early church followed the word and they stood on what God said. And that's where the Lord wants to get us back to. So thank you so much, everybody, for chiming in. And that was such a great question, Therese. Thank you so much for asking that question. So um, next question is, obviously, everybody publicly renounced, denounced. You've been very public about your testimony. Uh, let's talk about backlash. Have you gotten backlash from people? And if you have, or even if you haven't, share how you feel like you need to handle that. Because just because you haven't, there are plenty of people that have, and people are afraid. People have fear, have anxiety of losing relationships, being talked. Let's let's talk through that so we can give, you know, godly wisdom on how to handle those kind of situations for people that want to come out of these organizations. <laughs> Go ahead, Evelyn. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, I was still on campus, um, so I did get backlash, um, but ain't nothing happening to me physically. Uh, people definitely did. They were acting funny. So, um, kind of like Kalia said, I was very active on campus. People knew me. I was an RA. I was on the Royal Court and things like that. And also, I think um, nobody was really bold enough to really, like, step up to me and be like, you know. Um, I mainly heard things from behind closed doors. Like, oh, yeah, when this person heard that you denounced, they was laughing at you, blah, blah. Um Oh, this person was like, oh, she denounced, but why is she still wearing, you know, pearls or like um, pink or things like that? Um, like d just different things. Um, and, you know, people were upset. The girls I was pre-pledging, they were very, very, very upset. They they stopped talking to me for real. Um, and then some of my uh, launches at the time were very heated because, again, I was the basilisk. I was uh, we were preparing to, um, you know, get some girls online. And also it was me and my current line sister at the time who was still in the chapter. It was our fault that our uh, uh, we couldn't have a line or something like that. I forgot what happened. We got in trouble for something because we took some girls to church on a bus. Anyways. Um, but, yeah, I did get some backlash. Uh, people went when I was getting ready to even share my testimony out loud. People were kind of like yeah, can you not say this and, you know, don't do the most, blah, blah, blah. But, um, you know, I think it wasn't a lot of, like, physical things that I could really see. I felt it, but nobody was really, you know, bold enough to say or do anything. Um, and I think um, that was honestly the Lord's mercy and grace because I was so for him. I didn't care about nothing, Okay. But um, no, it was scary at first. I was actually upset that so many people found out so quickly. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like it's kind of embarrassing. Like, you know, you really can't go back when people know. Um, but that was kind of that experience. And I would say really with dealing with it, um, one thing I always tell people is that, you know, really huh, that love and zeal for the Lord is kind of what gets you through because it's like nothing. The fear of man just dwindles away when your love for God. That's why that's why that's the first and greatest commandment. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, mind, and soul because when that is there, nothing, nothing can compare to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Nothing can compare to having the acceptance and the love of the Father who made you. Nothing can compare 
to, to, to knowing that when you stand before him, you're going to look at him and you're going to just, there's going to be no type of guilt in you. You know that you're fully his. So I always go back to how is your relationship with the Lord? You know, I'm not trying to um, be mean or anything like that, but it's like, you have to start there because if, if there's some, a lot of concern about, um, the backlash and what people will think that means are you made perfect in God's love? Are you still walking in a spirit of fear? Are you still walking in a spirit of anxiety? Are you still walking in the spirits that entered you when you said yes to these things? And it's really starting there. Um, because man, when the Holy spirit comes upon you, he gives you a spirit of boldness and power to, um, you know, just walk through it. It's not the easiest thing. You're literally breaking a soul tie. It it hurts. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's not the easiest thing, but when you really trust the Lord and you um walk with him through it, that's what really keeps you going through. Um, so that would be my advice is really um continuing to be uh in relationship with the Lord, getting in your word, feeding yourself, building your spirit, man, um, because your flesh is dying and you can't entertain it anymore. Um, but yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah, I would mean, say like at the end of the day, there's only two kingdoms. There's a kingdom of darkness and a kingdom of light. And Jesus makes it clear: if you truly belong to Him, the world should hate you. So examine that fear. I'm not saying I didn't have that same completely irrational fear of what if they get mad at me? Get mad at me. Because the Bible is clear that if they are reviling you and mocking you and talking about you because of something that you're doing that's right, you're 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 storing pre treasures in heaven. So don't be afraid of backlash. If they talk about you, call your name, cuss you out, threaten you. Because again, Jesus says, you know, if you're being reviled because of the word of God, because of him, you're in good company. They should not say, Oh, good job. You would renounce. No, they should hate you because their daddy is the devil. So don't be afraid of them doing anything to you, to us. Again, this is about God seeking for his true sheep because his the Bible says his sheep hear him. So those, again, who don't hear him, that their daddy is the devil. So don't be surprised. They're going to talk about your rejection, call yes out your name and all this other stuff. Because, again, that should be. If you belong to Jesus, they should hate you. So stop being afraid of it. Um, so I wanted to add again that um, you know, so much happened. I don't I can't remember everything, but I just remembered that um people's true colors came out. A lot of my profiles um unfollowed me on social media, they were pissed at me. Um, but I I was like, yeah, y'all was never really y'all didn't care about me in the first place. Um, but also so Sometimes I could be a little gullible. One of the, my pro fights, um, who were like, who was like the second to last line before me at the time. Um, well, she was my profile at the time because I denounced. She had a business where she sold like scarves and stuff. And little old Evelyn, you know, went ahead and bought one of the items. And when I opened my package, it was some used bliss text in there. And I was like, oh, I know she did this on purpose. Because if I was still AK at the time, she would not be. And, you know, I hit her up, you know, on a customer to, you know, business person level. Like, I found this in my stuff. Hello. You know? And she was just like, oh, okay. And I know she did it on purpose. Petty and trifling. Um, but you know what? I, I, didn't, I didn't put all her information out about her business. Because it's okay. It's all right, but that did happen to me. Um, little things here and there, people aren't following me, people not talking to me. Um, but it was such a blur because I was just like, Y'all was fake anyway. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> I I'll say that my experience was probably treacherous, okay? <laughs> treacherous because I was graduating. I remember when going to graduation rehearsal, it was the weirdest thing ever. It was the biggest class I ever seen. It just seemed like all every all of the attention was was as was at you. You people stared. <laughs> people at people would come to the side 
and ask questions. If they would see me sitting by myself in the um, cafeteria, they would. Um, and some people would still ask me, or can you give away that that um, that hoodie that I like? You know, you know that that hoodie that you bought at the conference. Um, I know you you know went on social media and embarrassed us, but I I still want that one. Um, if you if you don't mind, and I had to. I was getting all kind of calls from people who wanted some old some old stuff, but didn't really want to know how I was doing. From people who um, wanted to know, well, why did you have to put the name of the chapter in the school that you went to? Like, why did why did you have to go to that extent? Those kind of calls, as if I didn't announce everywhere I go which chapter I was in, because I was so proud of my chapter, so proud of the campus, that so proud of the history. And, and the accomplishments that that chapter brought to that organization. So why I was just like, why not, you know, say which one it was? Because I, I shouted it everywhere I went. I named the founders on and the charter members everywhere I went. So why not? It was just people calling me saying, well, that was extra. You didn't have to. But as Evelyn said, God showed me that he was my friend. And the idea of what friend was changed. And I read constantly. It was hard. It was hard. I had to go to sleep watching the little, um, I don't know if y'all remember the beginner's Bible. I had to go to sleep watching the beginner's Bible cartoon so that if I woke up and cried, I would see something about the word on my TV. And I had to go to children's things because I was a little girl in a corner crying every day on the inside walking around campus every day like these people are talking about me and I know it I can just feel it I don't even have to I'm not I'm not that I'm not psychic or nothing like that in psych anyway being psychic is demonic so let me not give that any honor and glory but um there's just there was I, I just remember that the, the the backlash was real my strength was in the Lord my strength was I had to get in the Bible every single day. I had to read it when I got home. I had to quit my job because it was too much. I worked at the campus Starbucks. So it was just, it was too much. It was too much taking orders and the people staring you down like, yep, that's her. Mm -hmm. The other Greeks coming in, that's her. Oh, you and pointing, pointing. You can see them pointing from the corner in the, at the coffee table. You, you can see it, it it was just too much. and But God kept me. I was holding on to that little job for financial reasons. He kept me. My bills were paid. I was I was fine. And um, I, I just, God really is love. He showed me what love was. There, there was a song I, I had to sing to myself every day. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything I was feeling every single day, the scrutiny, the the bashing, the my the people in my family, not even being Greek, asking me why I did it. God showed me what family, he was my family. He was my friend. He was my sister, my brother. And and I just want you, you all to know that anybody that's watching this, that's wondering how am I going to make it through backlash? He is bigger than these people. He created them. He will engulf you if you let him give him that opportunity. And maybe this is what you need. Speaking out will be the opportunity to really go get closer to him like he's what like he wants from us. Hey Amen. Remember, you're in good company. They did the same thing to the Lord. He was rejected. He was reviled. He, they think they point fingers at him. They spit on him and they even beat him down. Yeah. And after all of that on the cross, Jesus said, forgive them for they know not what they do. So that's why he tells us to pick up our cross and care with us every day. So when they start mocking us and reviling us and doing these things, that we don't get afraid knowing that the Lord, our God, he suffered the exact same thing. Yes. So understand that's how I can now actually pray for my enemies. 
these people who are pointing fingers and mocking and things, I feel sorry for them because it is a terrible thing to be an enemy of God. I don't have to worry about my own safety, my own reputation or whatever, because I know that one day if they don't repent, they're going to be in a place you don't want your worst enemy to go to. People don't take hell serious. So now I have a different perspective. So if somebody wants to talk about me, call me names, I don't have to get mad, sad, scared. I just have to say, Lord, I pray for this person. Mm -hmm. Because again, hell is real. And again, my savior on the cross, bleeding and suffering, we can't even imagine if he can say to, on that cross to say, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Stephen, while he was being stoned, was saying, don't hold this to their charge, Lord. See, this is where knowing the word of God, really knowing it and understanding that this is what God calls of us to do for us too. So can put it in perspective, you know, especially if you're, if you're by yourself, technically like you're, if you're on a college campus and like, you're the only one, you don't have anybody else in your corner. And like I said, they're poking and, and talking about you. I know it's hard, but you put God's armor on, you put, you pick up your cross and you walk proudly through that campus. You understand that all these people who are mocking you and, and talking about you, if they are not repentant, if their name is not in the last book of life, they are going to go to hell. And again, this is what we have to remind ourselves of daily, that this walk that we, we, we walk, the Bible's clear. We don't get to heaven except through much persecution. Stop believing these prosperity, go the gospel people that say, oh, life is good when you become a Christian. No, Jesus made it clear. You're going to have trouble if you belong to me. So yes, and you come about denouncing and if you're, if you're thinking about it and you're by yourself and you're worried about people talking about you and doing things to you, they talked about Jesus too. Yeah. And you got to put his, you got to get that, 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 let go of that fear of them saying things about you, talking about you. Because again, at the end of the day, all that matters is God's opinion of you. And again, one day you have to stand before him too. And before that day, again, the Bible's clear. They'll be able to see you. You know, they're standing at the judgment seat. They're going to be able to see you. Like they were mocking you. And now you're standing at the, at the judgment seat. And God is telling you, come, daughter. You, 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 you obeyed me. You sacrificed for me. You strive to enter into that narrow place that few find. Come into my kingdom of paradise. No more pain. Get your new body where there's no more suffering. That person who mocked you and didn't repent, they're going to see you. And they're going to know the, the shame. They're going to know the, the, the problem. They're going to know the serious, truly serious matter that they ignored. So don't fear. Don't worry about what they're going to say about you. Expect it. That's the thing. Expect to be mocked. Expect to be ridiculed. Expect to be threatened. Because if you truly belong to Jesus, that's what should be happening. We're in a world that belongs to Satan for now. I mean, you know, not belong. He's he's written it. But again, we we should be hated, not applauded and clapped on. So again, I I welcome. Please revile me. Talk about me. Good. Because I know that I'm I'm right with God. I don't belong to the devil. Right. And, and I wanted to uh, speak a scripture why, um, from um, 2 Timothy chapter 3. And when Paul said, or Paul says, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all, the Lord delivered me. And, and verse 12 says, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus uh -huh. shall suffer persecution. So if you truly live in, in Christ, you will be suffering persecution. It says shall, as a matter of fact, <laughs> that is to be expected. And out of them all, he will deliver you. And when you don't feel strong, he expects you to lean on him for a strength. There's a scripture that's coming. I can't say it verbatim right now, but um, when you are weak, he makes you strong. You lean on him. He, he expects you to be weak. He wants you to say, you know what, Lord, I can't do this. So that's when his power is able to be um, 
announced in your life because we go through everything thinking I did this. I hustled and I'm and a lot of people are coining the term. I manifested this. I did this. I did that. We, we, we accredit a lot of stuff to what we did. Now we, he's looking for us to let him come in and show that he brought us, he did this. It was his strength that'll get you through walking, walking around campus. Hey, uh, Keisha, do you have anything you want to chime in, talk about, share? Um, well, I just want to say, well, I mean, I, I, the backlash, it was there. Um, now, as when I, when I put my video out and I made it public, um, see, the Lord led me to do that. So it's just like, I wanted to make, before I even put it out, I told my husband, I said, I want to make a little video and put it out, but I'm not going to move unless the Lord tells me to. So when he began to give me dreams and he began to show me, well, hey, this is what I want you to do. I put it out. How I thought I was going to feel, I didn't feel it. I thought it I wasn't going to be ready, but it's like the Lord prepared me for what was about to happen. And it's just like I had people like calling me, checking in, you know, certain people like, how are you feeling? You know, and I was good. I was like, I mean. I'm good. Like I'm straight. Like I don't even feel a certain type of way about putting it out because I'm not here to please me. I'm not here to please anyone. So it's just like, I'm doing it for God. And like, there were some indirects. There were some people who were unfollowing, unfriending. They was in the group me's because I still had, you know, it, some people that was in there, you know, they still kind of, you know, sent me certain things. It's just like, Certain things I wanted to respond to because I wanted to get in my flesh a little bit, but the Holy Spirit, at, at, let me handle that. I didn't have to say nothing. I don't have to do. I, the Lord is going to. The Lord is going to fight it. Everything that you say, you're going to be held accountable for it. Everybody that shared it to be petty, you shared it, but guess what? A soul going to be saved because out of your pettiness, somebody going to see it. It's gonna plant a seed and it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna free someone. So it's just like I had to remind myself to constantly pray for people. The Lord had to constantly remind me that the people that don't have my spirit, they don't understand spiritual matters, they don't understand it, they only understand what's going on in the world, they only understand worldly matters, they're thinking carnally. So they I had to constantly like just fill myself up with the word of God to understand, like, hey. Not everybody understands, but I have to pray for them. I, that's the only thing. I, after me letting you know this and you still choose to walk in darkness, the only thing I could do now is pray for you. And I still pray for I still pray for them. There are some people who see me. They don't even want to speak. But guess what? Hey, because you're not my enemy, because that's what people don't understand. Like you're not my enemy just because I say, OK, I'm not a part of your sorority anymore. That doesn't make you my enemy. You're not my enemy. We all have one enemy and that's Satan. Satan is my enemy. So when you are attacking me and you're coming at me, I know it's that spirit. I know it's not true. It's the spirit that's that's working within you. So it's just like, I, I you know, it's hard because, you know, you, you have to be strong. And like, you know, Kalia said, like, hey, in our weaknesses, his strength is made perfect. So when we're weak, we're still strong. You know, we're not we're not just depending on our, you know, we're not just depending on our strength and our strength alone because we can't do it just off our strength. But it's just like just as just as much as people that came, the enemy sent to try to tear me down. The Lord sent twice as many to help build me up with his word. Like I didn't have to worry about that because I always had someone encouraging me. I also had someone just building me up with the word of God. So I didn't even have to like enemy. You think you're going to get it, but no, God going to come and he going to bring it. He going to bring more. And it's just like people, God brought even more people to help encourage me and just build me up and just remind me, well, hey, that's just the end of me, you know, but I mean, you're going to suffer it. And hey, I did. Well, I will say that you four are all an inspiration to me because I still like I struggle like this is still new to me. Like I just went public 
about my denouncement on December 31st. And then um, last week I had did the moment of truth. And when I first did the denouncement, everybody, I was getting the text messages, Amber, we, we still love you. And it was some AKs commenting on my status, um, love you no matter what, you'll always be my sister. And then when I started talking on the moment of truth, then people started getting upset. And someone actually had texted me this morning and basically said that my testimony was stepping on her. And it hurt me. It hurt me so bad. Like I, I cried. I felt bad. And um, I, I, I actually ended up talking to India and she, she helped me. She gave me that boost of encouragement. And she reminded me that, you know, I have people who have been where I am and that, you know, this comes with the territory. Like when you're doing what God wants you to do, the devil, he gets upset, he gets angry and he uses people that you care about to try to get your feelings involved. And then like later on in the day, I realized like the only person whose head I crushed with my testimony was Satan. So if you feel like you were stepped on, who are you aligned with? And that's what I had to realize. I can't sit here and, and try to tap dance around everyone's feelings for the sake of appeasing them. Because at the end of the day, for 10 years, I broke God's heart. For 10 years, I hurt God. 10 years, I chose somebody else over him. And so if I have to choose between hurting him or you, I'm choosing you. I'm sorry. I'm choosing you. And if you hurt me back, then that's OK. I can deal with a little hurt after I hurt my savior, the one who died for me. After I hurt him for 10 years, I can deal with a little hurt on his behalf. So it's, I'm still in the process of like getting to that point because I, I'm sensitive. I, my, I Since I was a kid, my mom, was Amber, you wear your on your sleeve. It, you got to get th uh, thick skin. Like I'm sensitive. I'm, I'm the type of person. I've always wanted everybody to like me. I want everybody to be cool with Amber. And I just had to, you know, I'm at the point where I'm like making a decision. Like if I'm going to follow Christ, I have to be okay with the ridicule and Matthew 5 10 literally says blessed are you when you are persecuted for righteousness sake for your reward is in heaven and so I had to stop worrying about you know people who like at the end of the day you know I didn't know you before aka I wouldn't have had a relationship with you if it wasn't for aka and so we take aka out of the equation now all of a sudden you want to make a subliminal post about me or whatever the case may be then there it was nothing there was there was nothing there and so it's not it's, it's definitely not going to be easy like it's not and i also fear people like saying like you know because at the end of the day i had just got elected for a position in my chapter in november december i decided to denounce january i'm speaking out against it so i do understand like a lot of people are being caught off guard but when god is telling you to move like you don't have the opportunity to sit there and think about it you have to move because the last thing i want is for me to not do what God asked me to do and then somebody fall victim because I didn't do what he told me to do because of my disobedience. That's what, I, I don't want that. And if I lose every single person I thought was my friend, but then there's one person who comes to Christ because of me, then, I, then I've won. And so I, I just can't, I can't be emotionally invested in that way. And I'm working on it. So y'all pray for me. Cause like I'll say this and then the next man I'll be like, man, I'm sad. This was my friend. So please, please pray for me. But I like I, I know what I need to do. I know what I have to do, but it's just the process of, of getting there. Yeah, and just remember too, as we're doing this, there's always gonna be two camps. The Bible's clear about that. There are those like at the beginning of Acts when Peter and them preached, they were cut to the heart and said, man, what should we do? And they were open to the word of God. And of course they repented and, you know, 3,000 and 5,000 were at it. And then there's another group, like I said, at the stoning of Stephen, the Bible says when they heard that truth, they had hard hearts. And so they were, they were gnashing their teeth and they were full of rage and that's what led them to stone him. So nothing's changed. So when we're t talking to people, we meet people on the streets or talking to our pastor or other people, understand they're going to either be cut to the heart to repent or they're going to be enraged. And because that word again, the word has no, like the Bible says, that word doesn't, can't get into that hard heart. It's just going to bounce off. So just ex don't be surprised by the responses that you get. Because again, I say two kingdoms. 
Like I say to me, Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. And we understand he said few people belong to him. So I'm not going to be surprised that, like she said, 10 people here and only one responds. Then that's, so that's lined up with the Bible. Amen. Thank you so much. So now we're going to get to, this is like our last point. And then we'll see if anybody has any, like maybe one or two questions that they want to ask. So each one of you, can you share just some advice that you might have for um, the people that are listening who may have like family members, um, maybe even their spouse, you know, friends that are in the organizations, you know, um, help them, you know, as far as like, how can they minister to people that they're in relationships with? And then what advice do you have for people that are in it or want to be in these organizations? I would kind of just, just to kind of sum it up, um, for those who um, know people who are in the organization um, and you're just wondering how to move about it, you know, how we were kind of speaking before um, regarding, you know, just talk, you know, just even people who aren't really, you know, just a pastor or anyone like that. But I just say first, just pray about it, you know, just ask God to soften their heart. So when you go and you give them that message, they can receive it. Um, you know, just you just really have to pray for them first and just be led by, you know, the Holy Spirit to go and do that. Um, for those who are thinking about joining, when they tell you to do your research, do your research, not just, you know, just to know, but to just to, you know, know just to get in, but actually do your research, line, line it up and see if it, if it goes against the word of God. You know, everything we do, we must do it as if we're doing it for the Lord. We must do everything we do for the Lord. So it's just like he has to be getting the glory from it. So when you when you think about it, your reasoning for joining, why, why do you want to join? Is it to bring glory to him? You know, just think about the reason why you want to do it. What are you being led by? You know, just really make sure it aligns with the word of God. Yeah. Um advice for those who have people they want to minister to definitely repeating um prayer um it's in it's again like i said before it's in the place of prayer where you surrender kind of like the israelites when the israelites said lord we do not know what to do but our eyes are on you understanding that god is the one who knows their heart he created them he knows exactly what word like you even if it's one word, he knows. So trust him to lead you um, and to also humble yourself, um, to not come at them in pride. Um, and and remember that you're, you're not God. You can't force them to do anything. It's really him that his kindness leads them to repentance. Um, so also be able, you know, you know, praise God, there may be some times um, where they repent right then and there and announce, you go, like, okay, let's do this. And then there may be other times where they push back and you have to keep on praying for them. Um, but, you know, continue to do your part. Do what the Lord tells you to do. You can't control them. Um, uh, for those who are interested um, or you're currently in it right now, again, I would say, um, it reminds me of the scripture of Lord, search my heart, find any wicked way in me and lead me into the, um, and lead me to everlasting. That prayer is a serious prayer. That's a dangerous prayer because when you pray that prayer, you're really putting yourself in a place of submitting to God. My advice is to get out of your head. Get out of, you can't do all the math and all of that stuff right now. Um, because if your flesh still wants it, you'll find every reason to still be like, oh yeah, no, no, no. Submit to the Lord. Actually listen to his voice. Act, be honest with yourself. Be really honest with yourself. Examine yourself. Are you in the faith? Have you surrendered to Jesus? Come on, be very honest. 
Because some of y'all be like, I talked to God and he ain't saying nothing. And it's good. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Um, That would be my advice is to submit and to surrender to the Lord so that your eyes and your ears may be open to clearly hear um, what he's saying. We all know what he's saying, but we want you to hear it too. But yeah. Yeah, and just time on to say, I think the critical component, key component, you have got to rightly discern, rightly understand God's word, because there are some who will say they know it's really not of God, but they're just going to do it for God. And there's too many scriptures in the Bible that talks about you are worshiping God in vain. He's not getting that act of whatever you think you're doing for him, but it's in the guise of the sorority or fraternity or Freemason that you're doing it for God. Like I said, in the Old Testament, when I forgot, get the guy's name where he, he it was a it was a law. Nobody was supposed to touch the ark except for the you know ordained and approved high priest. He thought he thought it was OK because the, the, the ark was falling to the ground. He thought he was doing a good thing for God. But the Bible's clear. He touched that and then God <laughs> killed him instantly. And a lot of people use that as I don't want to serve God because he's mean or whatever. Because how serious is about obedience. That's how serious is about sin. But we do this thing again where we're doing things that are ungodly and then say we're going to do them for God. Understand. God did not get receive that. You are worshiping him in vain. And so we have to like some people, like I said, we have to make sure we have God's Holy Spirit in us. We got to rightly know his word. We got to rightly understand it. I mean, I'm reading Jeremiah and my heart. I can't, It's like I stop at a paragraph because I'm just like, Lord, this is us. We have lying prophets, lying preachers telling people they can live any kind of way and still get to heaven. And there ain't no heaven or everybody gets to heaven or ain't no hell or hell isn't that bad that you can still do these things when they don't. I'm like, what Bible are they reading? So no, you got to know God's word. You got to really know it and you got to really understand it and really apply it. There's a way that God tells us to worship him and he does not say compromise here. There's a lot of things that we do and we say we're doing it for God, but it is not. It is not of him and he's not accepting it. It's burning. It's going to burn up. I, don't, I mean, again, I'm thinking about some of the things when I first became saved that I thought I was doing for God. Now I know the judgment seat, they're going to burn, you know, all that stuff. And I would say I was serving the homeless and donating all this stuff. It's going to burn because I was doing it one out of selfish ambition. Like, look at me. Look what I did. Like Jesus says, the hypocrites, they sound on the on the streets and they blow a trumpet. Look what I did. And, God, and, and Jesus says they've got their reward here on, on earth. It ain't registered in heaven. So we don't want to be worshiping him in vain. Don't be doing, like I said, if you're not in it, consider again. You're not going to be doing this for God. You're going to be doing it for yourself. But we're not to do anything that we're not supposed to be mixing God stuff with devil stuff and then trying to serve him this putrid vomit that we call in worship of you because he's not accepting it. He wants us to be pure, spotless, virgins. I mean, all those different scriptures. So know his word, rightly divine it, rightly understand it. And if you have questions about this, any one of us, again, we can go to our website out from among them, outreach any one of us willing to talk to you, help you through this. If you're in it again and you say you're a Christian, like I said, really consider, are you truly a Christian? Like, like the sister said, examine, are you, do you truly belong to God? There's several scriptures in the New Testament. People think they're secure, but are you? Because Jesus, to me, the scariest scripture in the whole Bible, the scariest one is Jesus saying in Matthew chapter seven, oh, Lord, did I not serve the, the community? Did I not give and tithe? Did I not cast out demons in your name? Did I not march in your name? Did I not do all these things in your name? And he says, depart from me. I never knew you. That's the scariest scripture to me because basically he's saying you can be a Christian doing all this stuff that you're thinking is for him and he doesn't know you. 
your name has been blotted out and you think you're still good with him. So to me, it's like that scripture is like a nice little splash of you know cold water when I'm thinking about stepping out on God. Like, wait a minute, no, mm -mm. I don't want to be that one standing before him. And he says, I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of wickedness. Because when you have to think about God's word, he says these people were prophesying, casting out demons and doing many good works. He doesn't deny that they were doing these things, but he says they're wicked. So we can be doing things that we're thinking we're doing them for God or they're godly when they're works of iniquity. So it, we've got to know his word. I want to make sure if I am out there feeding the homeless, if I'm out there serving widows, if I'm out there doing these things, even talking now, that I'm not doing this for any other reason, but like you said, to show God, get you to repent. But if I'm doing it for anything for me, like give me, give it to me, give me accolade, look, look at me, see me. I know that I'm doing it with the wrong motivation. And again, I'm not getting that, you know, that that prize in heaven for the work I'm doing. Jesus is going to look me straight in the eye and say, you were a worker of iniquity, Erica. And I don't want that. I hope you don't. I guess the hell is very real, people. And you don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. Anybody else have anything before we go to um, seeing if there's a couple questions we want to answer? Does anybody else want to chime in? Okay. So we want to give an opportunity. If there's any, we can take maybe like two questions because we're on like, we're on three hours. Which actually, this is shorter than the last two videos because we were on like four hours on the last couple of videos. So and I want to be cognizant. We're already at 10 o'clock um, uh, right now. So definitely want to give an opportunity. If there's a couple questions you want to ask in the comments that you want us to address, please feel free to go ahead and type those now so we can um, we can go ahead and get to those questions. Please chime in. I'll give a few minutes to see if anybody types anything in. Everybody just agreeing with everybody right now. So I don't see a question yet. <laughs> Let me see if there's anything um, back in earlier. There's so many comments, you guys. Are so trying to go all the way back to older comments. I don't even know. Um, thank you, Desiree. Love you. Um, yeah, there's a lot of questions, JD, and I'm, I can't scroll all the way back, all the way up. So if anybody has anything else, because um, in the platform, it only lets you go back to like a certain amount of questions to see. Um, so I can't get all the way back. So if there's anything on your heart that you want to share before we wrap up, if there's anything else that you want to leave with anybody, whether it be scripture or anything like that. Um, Yes, I want to say one last thing. I just want for those that are still in the organization and they're they're afraid of hurting, because that was the first thing I thought about. I was afraid of hurting everybody I had developed relationships with. And you're you're thinking about um, well, if I love them, I I wouldn't. I wouldn't I wouldn't do this and God wouldn't tell me to do that and uh, expose this and that or say this because it will hurt them. And God is love. You have to ask yourself because that God is love quote is thrown into so many scenarios that it does not apply to. God is love. That's true. What else is he? Is that the only thing that the word I mean, the big 66 chapters like the Bible and. 66 books, I'm sorry. Is that the only thing that God describes himself to be? Isn't he a jealous God? Isn't he a righteous God? Isn't he also a holy God? Isn't he also the same God that said, if these people do not accept this word, Noah, go ahead and build the build the ark, leave the rest of them behind. They're, un they're unrighteous. They're unholy. That's the same God. 
as the same way that these ladies have said, know who God is, study, ask yourself, am I really in the faith? And once you get to know what God really says, that will be your greatest strength. You will clean, you will be able to cling to his word and it will give you strength. And that's that's what I want to leave you with. His knowing him is the best, best way to get through this. So we had a question come through from Lat uh, Latoya, which is a great question. What do you think are the spiritual implications of now having a, a AKA vice president? I'll go ahead and um, start with that. This country, I, and again, this I'm going from the perspective of what our true ancestry and our true inheritance is. America is Babylon the Great. Leave that to them. And that's just how I feel about it. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Yes, I do have to live here for now. But regardless, whichever way the ball swings, I'm covered in the blood. I do feel like people are going to see Kamala Harris and aspire to, you know, look at her. She's black. She's in a black Greek letter organization. Like they're going to aspire to those things because when you see glitz and glamour, you want, you want, you aspire to that. But I honestly, these elections, the political stuff, like I just don't get super emotionally invested in it because this, I mean, my, my citizenship is not here. I mean, on paper it is, but my citizenship is in heaven. I like do whatever y'all are going to do. I'm covered in the blood. That's that's how I feel about it. And I mean, people get upset. They're like, you know, people died for your right to vote and stuff like that. And I will never take that away from them. I get it. I understand 100 percent. But at the end of the day, we are living out prophecy. It's nothing we can do to stop prophecy. Like it's absolutely nothing we can do. And so situations like this, I just feel like when it comes to like American political stuff, this is this is Babylon the Great. Let them have what they're going to do. I'm covered in the blood. And that's how I feel. Right. Yeah. Um, just to add to that, I would say the spiritual implications are kind of like um, what Amber was talking about. Those who already idolize her, those who are looking to her, um, whether they claim to be Christian or not, what that's going to do is it's going to open a door um, and it's going to invite more of a tolerance for wickedness and witchcraft. So those, in my opinion, would be the spiritual implications. Um, you know, the whole feminist thing, you know, it's just going to fuel more of the wickedness and witchcraft already in America. And it's like what we continue to do as true believers in Christ is to continue to not tolerate evil wickedness to hate the things that god hates um and to really also guard our hearts um concerning this because a lot of people who you know may have heard testimonies like this and then they're looking like oh well this well she's you know it could really um make some people go backwards so it's really important to um continue to pray and continue to spread the gospel while we still can. And I'm leave it like that. Yeah, amen. And to me, it just to me, it just confirms that the Bible is true. I know right now the Bible is under attack, all these false, wicked versions, but the Bible is true. It's just confirming the word of God. Again, Second Timothy, Matthew chapter 24, Luke. Again, he says before he comes back, we are. It, it, we're in the last days. Accept this. These things we see happening around the world, particularly in our country, our country is wicked from the core. And actually, it was been wicked from the very beginning. Unfortunately, like I said, the wicked seeds were planted at the very beginning. We're just seeing the fruit of it. But it's the confirmation of God's word. He says, I tell you these things ahead of time. So when you see these things happen, that you don't get deceived, there's going to be a great falling away. There's going to be perilous times and we're seeing them right now. So to me, when, you know, we have supposedly a second powers, powerful person in the United States, 
is a, a, a woman who has reportedly, again, she supports killing the baby. She can support, like, say, the feminist movement, all these ungodly things. This is what the people want. And God is going to give, he's going to give us what we want. We've asked for a human king. We don't want God anymore. And we're going to see that we're seeing the fruit of that now. It's To me, it's all it is is confirming his word as the day goes by and this country gets more wicked and more wicked. God's word gets truer and truer every day. You have got to stay grounded in the word of God, because even Jesus says, I wonder if I'll find any true faith when I come back, because things are, things are going to be so bad. So much deception, so much deception. There's thousands of preachers and prophets and evangelists and all this stuff and all of them saying different things. But he says again, you need to watch and pray. Don't be don't be drunken and and fooling around with the world. But he said, I'm telling you these things because you're going to be tempted to do that very thing, because you're going to see all these people who are so called, supposedly having so much fun, do what thou will, party it up, have a good old time, and then again, when the end comes, truly comes, you're going to wake up and you're going to be like, what's going on? You're going to be surprised. You're going to be caught like a thief because you weren't watching. You weren't praying. You weren't fasting. You weren't repenting, truly. And so God tells us again, he tells us that when you see these things happening, look up for your redemption is near. Her confirmation, Biden's, the puppets confirmation, all of the, the congressmen, the re representatives, we have to understand we live, this system is wicked. We can't trust nothing. They say no way, but we can trust God's word. He says, when you see these things, Make sure you don't get caught up. Make sure you don't get deceived because there's going to come a day where what we're doing right now is going to be illegal. Like I said, there's going to come a day because it's happening in China. It's happening in, in other places. It's coming here too. We think we're, I don't know why we think we're blessed by God. No, the God yeah. of this world. And when the true God removes his hedge, like I said, what we're doing right now is going to be a, a, a crime. If we try to do it, Facebook's going to shut us down. YouTube's going to shut us down. Because if you're saying anything against, you know, homosexuality, if you're saying anything against fornication, if you're saying anything against witchcraft, false religions, you are an enemy of the state. It's coming to America. It's coming to industrialized nations. So know God's word, believe it. That's what, again, her confirmation, like I said, I mean, I know what God, his support says that before he comes back, it's going to be literally hell on earth before, the, before he comes back. And I expect people who belong to Satan to act like him. He's a liar. He's a murderer. So I'm not surprised at the things that I see every day on the TV. Although, I mean, I try not to watch it anymore because there's nothing on there worth watching. But yeah, her confirmation, I think is to me, the spiritual implications is confirming God's word. We are living in the last days. Indy, I think you're muted. Thank you. Sorry. Um, I was trying to say if there were, anybody had anything else before I moved to the, we had another question. Okay. So I was just going to wrap up with Latoya's question on saying this is all the more reason why we need to pray and for the lost and understand that there's lost in the church. So just because people are in the church, that does not mean that, you know, <laughs> that everybody is truly born again. So this is this is the reason why we're doing what we're doing tonight, um, because, you know, like everybody has already touched on, there is an entire beast system in order to set things in place for the Antichrist. And all of secret societies is a part of that. That's an intricate part of what Satan is seeking to achieve. And even with Kamala Harris, and it's not just Kamala Harris. Hello, Raphael. Uh, I'm going to say Warlock because that's why I feel like his last name is. But Raphael Warnock, who's an alpha, who was um, put into the Georgia Senate. And then you have Stacey Abrams, who's also a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha, who um, was really put in the limelight for changing the structure in Georgia. And I live in Georgia, so that's how, you know. Um, but trying to push all of these anti-Christ things, like abortion, um, homosexuality, pushing all these things. 
And this is the goal ultimately um, to set up eventually for, for the Antichrist and for his reign. You know what I mean? Um, remember that all this is going to happen. And um, uh, before even, you know, the Lord comes back. I know a lot of people think differently, but honestly and truthfully, all that's going to happen before uh, Jesus comes. <laughs> so, um, but this is all the more reason why you have to be bold and preach the gospel. Uh, that's something Paul chimed in is we're supposed to be preaching. We should have more urgency now to preach the gospel more than ever before. Um, and that's why this is very important. So let me get to the next question. Uh, Van's question is looking back, were there warning signs before joining? Yes. Um, I told y'all I did research. I don't know if you were on here when I said this, but I did research on um, the organization and I actually ran across a denouncing video. And I kind of was just like, ah, that was just her experience. Um, God bless her. I don't know where she's at to, uh, now, but she had like so many different parts of it. And I actually, you know, watched, I found the rituals, but I was like, oh my gosh, this this looks like a scary movie. I don't, I don't know if I still want to do this, but I was like, uh, maybe it's just fake, you know, just, just some fake rumor. Um, so that was a warning sign. And I felt like even throughout the process before actually finishing the fact that I was a number six, I was just like, I don't know if I'm just dramatic with numbers, but I was just like, oh my gosh, I, I wanted to be like a five or something. Just different things like that. Um, I was failing my classes. What? It's just like, you know, that was a warning sign before I even really finished. Um, I remember even my mother, remember I mentioned earlier that I had no background, no family in Greek life. And my mom was kind of like, she some something, you know, Holy Spirit was speaking through her like, yeah, do you really need to do this? Like, I, I don't know about this. She was uncomfortable with me doing it. Um, so that was a warning sign. Um, and I feel like the deeper I got into it, the it was it was almost as if I could hear the Lord warning me less. But but also at the same time as the deeper I was getting into it, my eyes were like, oh my gosh, this is actually pretty bad. But yes, there were warning signs before joining. I um had two conversations with um two women that I had went to church with, but they weren't Greek. So it just it fell on deaf ears. Like one of them, um, her mother was a Delta, and um she had said that her mom I think God brought her mom to denouncing. She said, she didn't say denounce. She's like, my mom had to put it away. God told my mother to put it away. And she said, none of her like Delta sisters did. And they all died before my mom. And I was like, well, that don't mean they died because they didn't put Delta away. Like that could have just been anything. So I just, I didn't really um, listen to it. And then it was another girl um, who had went to my church. I don't even remember her name. And um, she had talked to me about it. And she was basically saying like, it is not a God, but she wasn't, she wasn't in it. So it was, it was just hard for me to receive. I just felt, I always felt like people on the outside looking in, they can't really speak on it um, because they don't know. That's why I think it's really important that we do speak on it because we've been there and we can tell these people, look, I've been in your shoes. God had to pull me out of it. I remember when I first like um, decided to denounce, I made the mistake of telling people like, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything though. I'm not going to, um, you know, say the rituals or, or be telling the secrets and stuff like that. And I realized now that that was just me for the sake of trying to, um, people please holding on to this covenant I made with AKA and God, God had to show me like you can't hoard salvation for yourself. You can't harbor it for yourself. If I brought you out, you need to go out there and you need to tell people because there are people who either aren't getting it or they're not hearing it from someone who's been there and I brought them out. So, yeah. So Keisha, go ahead and chime in because Keisha, I know, has to leave for the evening. So do you have something you want to add before you go, Keisha? Um, I just want to say my sign before actually joining was rejection. Um, many people think, OK, well, you know, that's not God, but that's God like literally protecting you from that. But even after that rejection, you still try to get in and get in and get in. So I can say like that was God protecting me. He was trying to speak to me then. And then once I got in, it's just I can see everything now, you know, not before, you know, not straight get in. But certain things I could just notice. But 
it was definitely that rejection from the beginning because I didn't get in the first time. But that was his protection that I couldn't see then, but I can see now. Thank you so much, Keisha. And let's everybody, please let's give love to Keisha. Thank you so much for your time and sacrifice. We love you. I know you got to drop off. Please have a wonderful night, okay? Thank y'all. Y'all have a great night. You too. All right. Anybody else want to chime in on the question? Warning signs before joining. Yes, I want to say um, similar to what Evelyn said. I saw the videos, part one, part two, part three. I saw them. <laughs> I, I wanted it so bad. That scripture is real. He gives you over to the lust of your mind, your reprobate mind. I wanted it so bad. I read as much good as as the bad that I saw to make myself believe that what she said in that video wasn't. <laughs> I was like, uh, no, she she just got mad. Nah, she was just something didn't go her way. I, I I came up with everything I could. I asked questions to make myself. I studied to show myself approved. I kept asking the the people who were members at the time, and unfortunately, I was trying to show myself approved to members of AKA, which is you're supposed to study to show yourself approved in the faith of Christ. But I was trying to. I I remember like going to them asking them questions just to make sure i could counteract it what i had already heard before and just trying to show so much interest to people who were <laughs> they i i don't want to bash anyone's character but that there were just different attitudes and things that i had dealt with and that was a sign the the process um the first after the first day the national after the first day of meeting together the national nationals had stopped the process so we had to wait a couple of weeks to to start back again that was a sign um that i wasn't supposed to continue but i still did it i wanted it so bad it, nothing was really going to change my mind with all of the warning signs and hopefully this video and broadcast like this will help people to see um, that they should really think twice and three times because <laughs> I wish I had. Anybody else? We got one last question we'll get to and then we'll call it a night. So the last question, I just want to uh, answer this. We kind of touched on this a little bit, but I just want to address it directly. Uh, can't you stay in the sorority to uh, win uh, other sorority members to Christ? That's like asking to go to the church of Satan and, and worship Satan, but be like, hey, when we leave, we're going to talk about Jesus, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like the title of our group. Again, God wants us out. Come out of them, my people. And be separate. He doesn't want us colluding, you know, with the devil, saying we're going to win the devil over. No, like I said, to me, it's like it's crystal clear. You know, it's like think of, I'm just thinking of two pigs in a in a sty. What you, you running around in the mud too. What you're going to have, you're going to help the other person. You covered in mud too. Like it makes no sense. <laughs> Um, to that, I would say I tried. Um, uh, I mentioned earlier that I truly gave my life to Christ while I was still in it. And the Lord was just pruning things off and things like that. And I was trying to hold on. I'm just like, Lord, you know, I can do this for you. I can be a light in the midst of darkness. Um, I was inviting people that I was... Um, that were being a uh, pre pledge I was inviting them to Bible study. So, oh, such a walking contradiction, inviting them to Bible study, pre-pledging at night. Um, and, you know, I really tried it. I had, you know, some there was something that we had, which was called Aka Week. So I was like, you know what, on Sunday, we going to go to church. And, you know, I, I, I really tried it. But the Lord highlighted um, uh, that scripture touch no unclean thing and i will have you you will be my sons and my daughters come 
out from among them. Um, yeah, and that's, that's our scripture. Second Corinthians what, y'all? Um, six. Yeah, six. Um, so I, I had to really come out. The Lord made it clear that I couldn't do both. I couldn't do both. What does light have to do with darkness? How can two walk together if they don't agree? I'm over here saying that I don't want to say the pledge anymore at the end of the meeting. Why am I still here? I can't do that. I can't pull somebody out of what I'm in. Um, so I had to come out. Sorry, I got kicked out. So, um, okay, so I'll, I'll wrap up with that um, just to say kind of just practical. Uh, it's kind of like the concept of like you're you're in a relationship and you're you're having sex with this person, but then you're talking about the Lord all day long and y'all are still in a in a in a you know in a relationship or you're in adultery with somebody, but then you're trying to tell them about Jesus. My question is, is what Christ are you actually leading people to? Because the Lord said in, in Matthew 24, there will be many false Christ. So what Christ are you actually leading to? <laughs> the biblical Messiah or the false Christ in the earth? And so I think that's key on um, many things that we do. Are, are you leading people to the true and living God or the God of this age? And many times, unfortunately, that's what we're doing is we're leading people to the little G of not Elohim, not Yahweh. So that is our last uh, question that we're going to address. Uh, we pretty much hit everything, I hope. And it seems like this was um, very helpful for everyone tonight. Uh, thank you for tuning in for as long as you have. Uh, we definitely appreciate it. Uh, this has gone on for, let's see, how long we've we been on here. We've been on here for three and a half hours. So I just want to bless all of you. Thank you so much for, um, for staying on and, um, and being on for being transparent, uh, and, and everything. I do want to mention to everyone that on tomorrow, I'm trying to remove this question off of the screen, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to get to it. We got so many, I'm, I got so many questions here. Uh, hold on. There it is. Okay, so I wanna I wanna say to everybody. So tomorrow, which is uh, January sixteenth, uh, tomorrow is Zeta Phi Beta's uh, Founders Day, and so tomorrow there's gonna be a broadcast. Evelyn is gonna be doing that uh, with our sister Chi Chi. Uh, she denounced Zeta Phi Beta. So on tomorrow, it will be on Evelyn's Facebook page. So. You can find her at Eve Zo, so Z O E, right, Evelyn? That's how you have it on Facebook, right? Um, it'll be it'll be public, it'll be open, so you can watch that tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, and so on and so forth for whatever time zone. So please chime in to that to that tomorrow, so you can hear uh, Chi Chi share about denouncing a uh, Zeta Phi Beta sorority uh, next month. In February, hopefully the target date is going to be on Saturday, February 20th. That is the target date. We're going to have an all couples broadcast. It's going to be about three or four couples that, that denounced the organizations, both the husband and the wife. And we're going to be talking about the denouncement. And we're also going to be talking about some biblical tips um, on marriage, godly marriage. So we're going to be sharing about that. And, um, and I know that people... Even, you know, a sister that I know, her name is Kiko. She's she chimed in about, you know, people have spouses that they one one spouse knows the truth and the other spouse is still in a secret society. And there's contention and there's things going on. So we're going to try to help the best we can through the Lord to give some um, tips. And these couples are, you know, they're um, they're firm in the Lord and, and they have um, they're definitely living out biblical marriage. So we definitely want to have that on next month. So please stay tuned with us. Follow us on YouTube so you can see that coming up on next month. Go back and watch those other broadcasts. The um, 10 of us were talking about denouncing Delta, the fact that we all came out of Delta, and go back and watch the moment of truth. So thank you again, everyone. Ladies, stay on for a second. You don't have to hang up. I'm going to end the broadcast. Just stay on.
Thank you, everyone. That stay tuned with us. Love you all. Thank you for some of you have really chimed in on all the broadcasts. God bless you. Thank you. Share, share, share the videos with whoever you need to. And um, and we love you all in the Lord. Have a good night, everybody. Enjoy your weekend.